Chapter 41, Rachel a hero does not have to be on a horse. When we were still in the kitchen, I could try to do a few things like touching C or squeezing Han's neck. Albeit my body was shaking non-stop since I was going against the system, I could do something. I was, still me. I was, not a slave. Laura, why did you not kill me? What did you mean by not yet? Why did you deny the plea of mine for my dignity? She must have thought killing me in the kitchen would be too much to clean. That was what I would think if our roles were switched. If Laura wanted to make things less of a hassle, she could have strangled me to make things better. The system would definitely fight back using my body, though. A stab in the neck would be much more efficient that way. When she saw me pulling Han up the stairs, it was the same as when I exited the room. She stood and watched me dragging his sleeping body. I remember very clearly the looks in her eyes. Anyone would have thought she had that look of victory or a winner. It was neither mockery nor triumphant, no. Out of every emotion that exists, what Laura showed me was, empathy. She did not say a word, yet I still felt that from her. Empathy, and relief. That made me think deeply. Would I have been different if we were born in another world? A world where we did not have to fight each other to be safe from the system and the plot. In this world, there was no doubt not a single one of the people here was normal. That could have been vastly different. We were enemies for sure. Regardless, if the circumstances were good, maybe we could have been friends, she and I, we were very similar. It was too late to be friends. We had agendas to fill. Laura needed to keep C by her side, and I needed to take him away from her. Also, there was another person at the scene that I could no longer disregard her existence. Kurikawa. Although very unpredictable, the bookworm gave me a second chance I desperately needed by tackling Laura to the ground. When I had no clue why she changed so abruptly, her sudden yell made me regain my spirit to fight for my own. Clutching on that golden opportunity, I bolted toward C to touch him. I thought it would make sense. I thought things would be resolved since Laura managed to do so. Ironically, the shackles remained the same. Even when Kurikawa's blood was on the floor, nothing changed, and I was denied to become human. Unfortunately for us, she used her blood to buy me the greatest joke ever. That was why I laughed. Everything was just so fucking funny I could not help it. Laura, who tried her best to block me, had a stunned expression I never thought she would have. All of us were being made fun of without realizing it. Me, Kurikawa, and Laura were fighting over nothing. I was in the depth of despair, brought back into the light of hope so I could be kicked out of it one more time. The second time I got kicked out of hope, it plunged even lower than before. That moment made me understand how a lost wanderer felt when they reached the oasis, just to find out the oasis was an optical illusion. My suffering was somehow amusing to others. My disappointment was immeasurable. If there is a god, a creator, they are not a good one. How did it feel looking at my pathetic attempt, no, our pathetic attempt to become human? How did it feel to take our rights away for entertainment? Did they feel pain when I fell back into hopelessness, or did they laugh it off? No idea. I had no idea. Probably it was karma or fate. I did not give a crap. After putting Han on his bed, my body went to my room for a change. That childhood friend of mine was unconscious throughout all the previous ruckus. Being as calculative as she was, Kurikawa did a perfect job at keeping him half dead like that. At the least, I could think of his thing as a dildo, a lifelike dildo with the ability to plant a baby inside me. Ugh. Disgusting. Rummaging through the wardrobe, I looked for something to wear. Flashy see-through lingerie was chosen after a couple of seconds. My body quickly put the clothing, if you could call the thin piece of silk that way, on and headed to the big mirror for me to see. I used to feel happy being able to do things for Han. If C did not exist, I would jump up and down because of my overflowing feelings for my childhood friend. Now, that is no longer the case. Standing in front of the mirror, I see my reflections. It is terrible. I look, hideous. At this moment, there is nothing I can do but weep. Even the tears streaming down my cheeks cannot be wiped away. I have totally lost. No longer do I have control over my body. My arms, my legs, they are not in my possession any longer. Except for my teary and puffy eyes, I have lost control of everything from the neck down. Because of the crying, my throat is so very sore. I wish I could stop, honestly. 
my body stands in front of the mirror, showing me the skimpiest thing I have ever seen in my life. The worst thing is I bought it myself the other day to prepare for this moment. The lingerie is a white piece of plain silk that goes from my neck to my crotch. There are no laces and frills whatsoever. However, two straps uselessly cover my nipples and leave my breast almost completely exposed. The straps go down vertically, cross each other near my vagina and go up my butt. Down in my nether region, there is nothing to cover. The white straps only graze my labia, leaving the entrance open. This makes my vagina extremely easy to penetrate. In addition, the one who will do the thing with me will not have to do anything since I am practically naked. After putting on the provocative outfit, my body heads toward the powder table. There, it tries to fix my look by applying makeup and tidying up my hair. In my head, the system constantly tells me why my body is doing so. T Wretched Game is feeding me all the information I need. For example, my body is trying to make me the most beautiful and sexy version to please Han. And even though it forces me to feel happy, there is only a bottomless pit of disgust inside my heart. The more the system forces me to love Han, the more resentful I am. I cannot feel romantic feelings toward him. They simply do not exist within me anymore. Soon, the preparation is done. I am at my best. My body stands up from the powdering table and heads outside to where my childhood friend is. While walking, I keep hypnotizing myself with words of deception, trying to live in another lie. Han, I do not love you. Know that. Etch that into your brain. I have no feelings for you. When I am having sex with you, it is not because I want to. It is because I have to. The truth is, I think of another man while forcing myself on your sleeping body. There Han is, right where I left him. He is still sleeping safely and soundly. His breathing, unlike mine, is calm and regulated. Slowly but surely, my body approaches the bed. I guess this is it. The only thing left for me to do is to wait until this is over, then kill myself. Before that, I will make Laura pay for what she has done. She will have to eat her paper knife again. I promise that, Laura. My eyes shut tight as I steal my body, waiting for the impact. All I see is darkness. But in that darkness, I hear the voice of my light. Damn, that was a freaking nightmare. I had never thought Laura could murder Rachel so cold-blooded as that. It was so real, though. I felt everything happening in that room, even the smell of blood gushing out of Rachel's arteries. Was that what they call lucid dreaming? With the same familiar voice, C's thoughts appear in my void. I really could not believe it. I thought Kurikawa did calculate the dosage. No. Can it be? Did she really think of this? Where is everyone? The kitchen is a freaking mess. Whoa. Blood. Kurikawa had been on my side all this time. Kurikawa, you bookworm, how far out did you plan this? In that short span of a second, I really see the light. Then, it hit me. All she did was in vain. C will not come here to me. He is terrified of me. C cannot possibly risk his life to see me having sex with someone else. I do not want him to see it, too. Thanks, Kurikawa. You are a splendid double agent. I can feel myself smiling. This is bad. This is really bad. Am I still in the dream? I know I should not be looking, but I need to check up on Rachel. She should be doing the thing to him right now rather than dying. Please, Laura, do not kill Rachel. That smile immediately changes to a gasp. Please, Rachel, Kurikawa, be safe. See. From the depth of my lungs, I shout his name. I hope he could hear even with my coarse voice. Why the heck is she calling my name so desperately like that? I need to see this. If I die, then at least I learned something new. Pull me out of this. Chapter 42, Rachel. I ignored the blood on the floor to run up the stairs. All the time, my mind only focused on one thing. That thing was the safety of the girls. There has never been any bloodshed on Rachel and Han's first night together. Therefore, the sight of that thing could only mean something horrible was going on. My body has been on high alert since my eyes caught a glimpse of that familiar color. I know damn well what blood means in a world where yanderies wander the earth. These girls did not simply hurt one another. They always went for the kill. My heart started beating faster, pumping adrenaline to all cells. At the same time, 
the muscles in me were all engaged as my fight or flight reflex was activated. Finally, a deep, dark feeling of anxiety quickly consumed my being. I was worried. Deeply. In my nightmare, I saw Laura mercilessly cut Rachel's neck and leave her bleeding to death. The scene ended with a crimson-covered Laura standing alone in the room. Honestly, I never expected to see such a dream since past Loras never had the chance to become a Yandera. Why she cut Rachel's throat, I had no clue. The weird thing is Rachel did not fight back at all. Please, hurry. Rachel's plea for help once again pierced my ears. Somehow, I got that nightmare where Laura killed Han's childhood friend in such a cold-blooded manner. My mind wondered whether or not that nightmare was something like foresight. I would laugh it off in a normal situation because such a thought was ridiculous. Regardless, at that point, anything out of the ordinary was acceptable. Was it because of me bringing them here? Was it some kind of butterfly effect that I could not fathom? That still did not explain why I had that dream, though. Could I be subconsciously afraid of Laura? She did say a few scary things, but I never expected her to kill someone like in that dream. Nevertheless, I needed to see Rachel. I needed to be sure she was safe and sound. After checking her out, I would find Kurikawa and Laura. I knew I should be checking on my girlfriend first. Yet somehow, I could not get rid of Rachel's cry for help. I felt I would regret it. Very strange. The closer I was to that room, the more nervous I became. With all that I had in my body, I prayed that what I had seen in the nightmare was only a fabrication of my exhausted brain. From then on, if she did not want to do it, I would not try to force the two of them together any longer. To hell with the plot. It had only brought me, nay, it had only brought us nothing but pain and despair. Why should I stick to something that will hurt its own people? Why should I stick to a god that would make things tremendously hard for their believers? I was stupid. Now is a time for changes. Rachel is not a character. Laura is not a character. Kurikawa is not a character. They are like me. Real people. The girls were born here, raised here, and will continue to do so. Just because they do not act like me with sentience does not mean I can treat them as objects. If I force the plot onto them, does that not mean I am the same as the system? No way. I despise it to my core. There is one thing clear, though. I need to apologize to Rachel. Thinking like that, I climb up the staircase and arrive at Han's room. Since the door is open, so I walk in. It was like that in the previous runs, also. Right when I step foot in, that girl greets me like an old friend. You, she came, at last. With a stiff and coarse voice, she turns to look at me. All of a sudden, a wave of nostalgia hits me. Have I seen something like this before? I'm here. Puffy and red, her eyes are really swollen. She must have been crying a lot. Although they are full of tears even now, the aquamarine color of her iris still shines brighter than the moon of this night. They have none of the craziness I saw in the first Rachel of the first dream. They are filled with, hope. Those are the lively eyes of the second Rachel. The one who looked at shadow person with feelings, emotions, regret, and pain. Those are the eyes of humanity. That look of Rachel pierces my heart like a spear. It is so transparent, so clear. She does not blame me for anything. After all that I have done until this point, she still believes in me to help her. How I wish for her to hate me, because at least my conscience will be better than this. Oh, God, what have I been doing? Playing with their feelings like they are toys? Who gave me the right to act all high and mighty? I was a total jerk to her. Instead of helping her out of her fate, I helped bring it to fruition. I, was wrong, I. See, you fucking bastard. See. No, self-loathing can wait. At least I am not too late. In front of my face, Han's childhood friend is in her lingerie. It is the type she wore in the past trials just for this night with the white color, signaling a commitment similar to a wedding dress. She never had the chance to wear a white dress with a bouquet of flowers in her hands, so she compromised with this lingerie. Her body is as gorgeous as ever. With the addition of her makeup, Rachel is twice as stunning when compared to her usual self. Her luscious lips are polished with one layer of pink lipstick, while her face has a whitish pink color. The eyeliner she does makes the light of her eyes even more exuberant. She certainly wants to make this night a night where she can call someone a husband. Sadly, that guy never sees her in that sense. 
nevertheless, her beauty can wait. What is more important right now is why she called me. PLE please, help. Hearing that, I come closer to the bed and notice many things instantly. There is no definitive answer I can come up with to explain what is happening. Rather than just sitting there, Rachel's entire body shakes continuously while her hands are clutching onto the bed sheet. As if refraining her from doing something irreversible, her hands are clenched so tight I can see some holes in the fabric where her hands are. She effectively tore the thing open with her bare hands. Next to her, Han is still sleeping without a care. He still has his clothes on. For all I know, it looks like nothing has happened yet. IIWA waited. Truthfully, I breathe out a big sigh of relief. I have been seeing Rachel's reactions to Han. I might have done something terrible if she did not wish to be with her childhood sweetheart. Still, I do not get it. Why is she doing this if she does not want to? She can easily stand up and walk back to her room, right? Unless, just like Laura's inevitable death, this event is also inevitable? Is the system behind this? That makes perfect sense, though. If so, how do I even change this? I have never messed up this event, so I do not know. What can I do? I ask her. And don't kill me for seeing your body like this. G give, me, your H hand. Making a crooked smile, Rachel struggles to make a sentence. Seriously, not going to lie, but I am terrified. Seeing Rachel being fine, reality starts to get back to me. The rush I felt created by the adrenaline in my veins is gone. Since my reasonings are coming back, I am scared of giving out a hand to have it chopped off. It has happened to me before. T trust, M me. Fuck it. If I die, I die. I extend my arm toward Rachel. See closer. You do know I am looking at your whole body, right? Closer means more booba for C. Not like it is the first time, though. Anyway, I comply. The guilt I have will not be solved that easily. Goo. She takes it. Her hand is cold. Not as much as a corpse, yet very close. How long has it been that way? It feels as if she has given up on life. Immediately upon our contact, Rachel's body stops shaking. All the tension inside her fragile body has disappeared in a snap. Okay. This may sound ridiculous, but I see something similar to invisible shackles leaving her body. I do not have eyes, so who knows for sure. Well, clueless as I am, I take it as a good sign. Gyuuu. After grabbing my hand for a few seconds, Rachel stops looking at me and lowers her head. I thought she would let me go, but no. Her grip only tightens on my hand. Ah, too tight, Rachel. It is a little painful. Oh. She reduces her strength. Thanks. Tap. What is that sound? Tap tap. There it is again. It sounds like water droplets falling onto a piece of fabric. I swear I am not hearing things. The sound is easy to hear since there is literally nothing and no one around us. Now that is a weird silence. Hello. Rachel. I do not know if my voice is too small that she can not catch it. It should not be, though. We could have had an almost normal conversation a few seconds ago. Looking at her bare back closely, I notice Rachel is shaking ever so slightly. Sometimes, her body would do something similar to a hiccup as it jolts up and then goes back down. Heek. She is crying, all right. Are you okay? Did I do anything wrong? No. Her voice is clearly shaken. Is this because I am looking at you like this? If so, I'm sorry. Should I turn my face away if you are so embarrassed? Don't. Russell. She stands up from the bed slowly to stand in front of me, not saying anything else. The full view of her body is revealed to me. From her head down to her toe, I can see every single detail there is to see. A delicate hourglass waist is in full view. Rachel's ample breasts are so wonderfully complemented thanks to the intrinsic design of her lingerie. Behind the white strap, I can see two clear notes standing out. If I follow the line of her outfit, then the end of it will show me her cleanly shaved nether region. I am stunned in my way. My mouth can do as much as gasps only. I am showing this because I want you to trust me. How am I going to respond? Thank you very much. This is the first time Rachel is showing me her own body like this. To my surprise, Rachel does not hesitate anything. In fact, 
she keeps getting closer and closer to me until her breaths can be felt on my skin. Since we are so close, the tears running down her face are very prominent. The same thing can be said about her look on her face. It is flushed. You don't need to say anything. Just promise me this. Rachel once again pleads. I do not have the heart to say no to her. I'm listening. Please, don't turn me away this time. She says, still with a shaken voice. I'm sorry for forcing Han on you. I look down at my feet. No, it's not like that. She grabs my face with her soft hands. Interestingly, those have a little bit of warmth now. Don't turn me away this time. I don't, UMPH. My lips are taken by hers. Chapter 43, Rachel Falling Even Deeper Han, say ah. I look at the other Rachel smiling happily while feeding her beloved. One of her hands is holding the fork with a piece of octopus-shaped sausage, and that thing is approaching Han's face. I have been here once in this scene, or should I say event. With the help of the surroundings, such as the wind and the sky, I know where I am. All things are pointing at my lunch with Han earlier on the rooftop. There is no way I would not recognize this place. Seeing this, I know that I am once again taken to one of the memories inside of myself. It seems that these will trigger under the circumstances with the help of C. He is the connection between me and my previous alterations. Please, do not show this thing to me, C, I want to cut them all off. They look like me, that is true. However, they are not who I am currently. I deny accepting that we are the same. Except for our outer appearance, we have nothing in common. I am not the same person I used to be. With the fork coming closer to him, Han turns red. Rachel. You know someone could be looking at us right now. Come on, Han, don't worry. If someone dares to sneak up on us, I will make them regret it. Besides, there are always two of us here. That Rachel says. Her eyes appear to be dangerous. They really are violent, are they not? All right. Say ah. Uh. Okay, this is where I will stop looking. I absolutely cannot take another second with this much cringe. Where is C, by the way? He should be close by, yet I see no sign of that cute faceless person anywhere. Obviously, he cannot be within this area since that Rachel can quickly find him and make his life miserable. My eyes start wandering, searching for a familiar silhouette on this rooftop. I almost immediately come to the conclusion that C is not here. Who am I kidding, this place is deserted. Even if C was here, he would not be able to hide anywhere. Cursing my silliness, I make my way toward the door. When my hand reaches out to touch the handle, it goes through without resistance, as if I was a hologram. Technically, I am a projection of my actual body somewhere else, so calling myself a holographic image is not entirely wrong. Therefore, this is not that surprising. If I cannot touch the door, I will go through it with this ethereal form of mine. Simple. Hoping to get out of this place, I advance through the thing in front of me. Behind my back, those two people are still flirting, with one girl holding and feeding the guy her home cooking. My ears can hear whatever nonsense they are spouting. I do not want to pay them that much attention, really. Although, those two remind me I should cook see something to eat. He will definitely appreciate my meal more than, that person. Unexpectedly, the moment my ethereal body goes through the door, it also goes through a person. He sits with his back leaning on the wall by the door, and his head tilts downward. I know him. I know him quite well. Rachel. Yes. My whole body jumps. I'm here. He can see me. And then, Rachel will reply with a yes. C continues. C. C. I'm right here. What is happiness to you? Han asks her. This is odd. Why are you talking in the third person? I pull myself closer to him. Hearing his question, Rachel smiles beautifully and says happiness is when I can spend time with you like this. He is narrating the story. Taking advantage of my condition at the moment, I stand inside the door to check up on the conversation and sees narration all at once. One ear is listening to the other two, while one is listening to C's words. There is, of course, no difference. C can not see me or hear me. That is similar to the last time I was brought into this memory world. So I should only have to wait until it ends. Hopefully, this memory is one of the nicer ones, or at least not that sad. 
I do not think I can take another heart-wrenching moment with C. It is in no way pleasurable seeing and hearing him fighting alone against an unwinnable force like the system. Then are you happy? Then are you happy? Han asks again. I am. Rachel replies with a resounding yes while hugging Han. Sadly, that hug makes Han cannot see the glint of pain in her aquamarine eyes. She has deliberately done so to avoid making it known. It is true. No matter how much I deny it, the other Rachel and I still share some similarities in appearance. There is definitely a flash of sorrow in her eyes. How much does she understand me? That is not something that anyone could do. It takes both effort and the desire to learn more about me to be able to accomplish such a thing. I do not believe C could read me so well because he had so much time on his hands. If he did not want to, he could not have done it. Why are you asking these questions, Han? It is the other Rachel's turn to make a question. C says to himself. I just wanted to ask. Lately, I have been feeling a bit off. Like something is about to change, you know? Something tells me it has to do with happiness, maybe my love life? I don't know exactly. Han scratches his cheek. It has to do with his love life, yes. The system is about to force all the girls on one person. To many, that is the ultimate goal. Not to mention all of them are yanderies. People will pay their hard-earned cash just to read about this stuff. Not that I judge them. They should do more if they so wish to. Well, is it a good change or a bad one? Rachel tilts her head slightly, seemingly trying to look cute. No idea. And she missed it? Han did not see her gesture like usual. Ding dong. The school bell rings. It's time to head back down. If I continue to be here, those two will notice me. After saying that, C hastily walks down the stairs. Contrary to the other two, C is only by himself. When I look at his back, all I can see is a lonely figure. I decide to follow C to wherever he wants to go. No one can see me anyway, so let me be his guardian for a little while. C walks back to class. However, he decides to not go back inside. My faceless hero only stands from the outside and looks in to check on something. At this point, I can only guess what C is trying to do. In there, I can see Kurikawa and Laura doing their usual things. Kurikawa is reading a book, while Laura is going around collecting papers that I think are assignments from the shadows. No one would ever imagine how these people, us, could be so violent when the time comes if they were looking at us like this. I would love to be a part of this world, but I can't. After some time, C mumbles. That strikes my deepest strings. My whole body trembled to hear those words coming out from C. It is, such a depressing thing to say. I just can't. He then turns at the opened windows. It's cold today. C. Even though I cannot touch him, I still decide to give him a hug. Desperately, I wish my warmth could transcend in space and time to let him feel something. Like when he gave me his thoughtful hand, I now hope I could bring him that, too. The lunch today was excellent, Rachel. Oh, wait, by saying that, I mean you are an excellent cook from my right, I hear Han's voice praising Rachel. Really? Thanks. I put a lot of effort into making them. Hugging his right arm, Rachel replies with hearts in her eyes. The two sentences were indeed different. One was complimenting the food, while the other was complimenting the one who made the meal. I understand some people would love it more when praised based on their dish. However, I would love it if I were the one being commended. The more important question is, why did Han switch his words out of nowhere? As the two people walk closer to the classroom, they notice C standing outside of it. Hey, C. What are you waiting? Class is about to start. Let's head in, Han. Other people can do whatever they want. Rachel pulls hard on Han's arm, ignoring C completely. In her eyes, there is no one but the love of her life. This woman. Okay. Okay. I get it. See ya later, see. Han waves his hand. He and his woman then move to their respective seats. Since you are such a talker, I will be easy on you tonight. That woman suddenly speaks of something strange. Haha, I have no idea what you are talking about, but thanks a lot. Han laughs wryly. Since he has settled, Laura approaches him. Hey, Han, do not forget that you need some extra classes with me. Private lessons. Ack. 
Do I really need to do it? The main protagonist has tears in his eyes. Yeah, you do. Laura nods. Your grades are terrible. Rachel raises her hand. Can I join, Laura? I want to improve, too. Can you all be quiet? I am trying to read a book here. Kurikawa chimes in the conversation. Sorry, Kurikawa. We will try to lower our voices. Han clasps his hands together and bows down to Kurikawa. F fine. She looks away hurriedly. C looks through all of that without making a move. Every time Han says something, he will either nod or shake his head. I feel C is trying to judge Han's ability. With that, they should be a little happier this time. Han needs to focus on the people more, and everyone will have a better life in this run. Maybe we can move further to pass the transfer student arc. On the outside, C walks away. The shadow people do not notice him. Even the tall, dark shadow man, Mr. Ooo, does not call him back as he makes his way out. Inside a sea of dark figures, there exists a small, featureless individual walking through them like a ghost. This kind of loneliness is unbearable to me, who is only a bystander. I will also be a ghost for him. If I can not help him, then I will share his pain. Click clack. The door to the rooftop does not open for C. Right, I don't have the key. Sigh. C sits back down on the top of the staircase where I found him after exiting through the door. He takes out a small, crumpled piece of paper from his pocket. It has four sentences. Compliment the girls. They need it more than anyone. Even when something happens, remember they love you more than anyone. Tell the girls that will make their rage go away. Pay attention to the small gestures around the girls. They are trying to tell you something. Happiness is earned. Work for it. Since I saw his lonely back, my eyes have already been tearing up. Not once when I was with him that I could control myself. I understand that my crying is getting satirical and unneeded, yet I still could not help but cry. It was him all along. It has always been him. The past, the present, and the future will always have C's marks within them. It was hard getting this thing inside of Han's stuff. At least he was able to read it. Ha <laughs> ha. Finally, I managed to do something. Always, always, he tried his best to find a way. S-C-R-R-R-R. C tears the whole thing in half, then another, and another, until the note is no longer recognizable. Puff. He blows the tiny pieces of paper away. They fly up high, turning into fake yet romantic snow. If only I had someone next to me to share this with. This looks amazing. I am, Heek here, C. And I am Heek seeing it. You are absolutely right. It is beautiful, but not as much as the person sitting here. It was quite surprising to see Han asking that question about happiness. Nonetheless, to me, happiness is simple. T tell me, see Heek I will try my best to get it for you. To see you girls achieve your happiness is my happiness. I, I do not know what to say. I used to wish I could change things to my liking. I used to wish I could have my own romantic story. After a while, I knew one concrete fact about this world. That wish would never be fulfilled. I don't exist here. My role is one of the least important, too. No matter how lonely I am, I would end up the same way. I have used up all my hopes. It is now as dry as a desert under a scorching sun. Thankfully, there was one thing that kept me from going insane. I have come to love these girls. Stupid, I know. Still, I would have lost my mind ages ago if not for them. Please, see, please, forgive me for not seeing this sooner. The way they struggle with their daily life, trying their best all the time, or the way they change their hairstyles just to please one person, all of those and more. I, I, I admire them. Rachel, Laura, Kurikawa, and many more are my heroine. The girls do not let anyone does anything to tamper with their happiness. Unlike me, who has no future, I put all my cards into them because I can see my future in them. If they can achieve their ultimate ending, then maybe one day, I will also have mine. What is the saying? Never put all your eggs in the same basket? Yeah, I put mine into these girls. Have you Heek, ever felt, regret? I ask him in tears. C looks to the ceiling. I regret nothing. Chapter 44, Rachel the Kiss from an Unknown Time. Whoa. 
The loud and howling sound of the wind pierces my ears. Hearing that, our lips depart, and I walk to the edge of the building. There is something I would like to do while waiting for that inevitable outcome. Whoa. Since the wind blows very strongly where we stand, I have to use both arms to put my skirt down. Did you see? I did. What did you see? I saw your peachy butt. Good. With only the two of us, I reckoned maybe I should just wear nothing. I was even thinking of going completely nude. After all, this is the highest place in the school. This place also holds symbolic quality in my heart. Nope. You will be cold and probably catch the flu, too. Does it really matter? It does to me. Ah. You really do love me. I have butterflies in my stomach. It is here that I confess to that man, where our short chapter started. It will also be where everything will come to a close. Glancing at the dark sky above us, I know time is of the essence. There is not much time left to do this and another thing. Crack crack. Although the school is still in shape, here and there, signs of corrosion can be found. The destructive nature of this world has erased everything around us except for this school. And by everything, I mean everything. His house is gone, Han's mansion is gone, and all the others, too. There are no more love rivals, no shadow people, nothing. Truth be told, I could not care less at this point. The one I need the most is by my side. Sometimes, happiness is just that simple. Oh. Here it comes. Come here to mama. I can see it right now. What I want is flying to this place on its own. From the top down, our school sakura tree is blooming with utmost radiance. When the time comes, it will bloom beautifully, signifying a fantastic conclusion to our stories. In my visual field, the pale pink color of the sakura petals is literally covering the school ground. With each gust of wind, they fly upward simultaneously, creating the most wondrous scene anyone could imagine. Like pink fairies dancing in the sky, they show me the best performance they could ever give. It is both congratulation and a farewell to us, to our fleeting love. Almost there. Since it is undoubtedly beautiful, I reach out to catch one petal with my hand. Caught it? Nicely done, Rachel. He he he. I told you I would be able to do it. Sniff sniff. How does it smell? Hmm. Sniff sniff. Kind of like a mixture between vanilla, earth, and flour. I explain using the best of my knowledge. Why wouldn't you know about it? I never paid them enough attention to try. So there are things you don't know. My lips turn into a mischievous smile. Yes, of course. I also don't know about what you think of me. Come on. Isn't it so obvious? How many times have we done that? Heat starts to rise inside me while thinking about something only the adults would do. Then, turning my back against that person, I shout with the best of my power. I love. You. The one and only you. No one else. Even when everything resets, even when this world reaches the end, I will find a way back to you. I am forever yours. Whoa. The howling winds are clapping hands at my efforts. Thank you very much, M. Lord. Once again, I look back at that person, hold my skirt with one hand, and do a medieval bow. You are always funny, Rachel. Tell me, what are you going to do with those petals? I would like to make a wish using one of these things. What is your wish? Dummy. If I tell you the wish, it will never come true. That makes sense. Hee <laughs> hee. I smile at him. My wish is simple. I wish for C to be happy until the end of time. I do not need this dying world to continue. We cannot do anything in it anyway. There is no book to read, no place to stay, no game to play. C will be bored with just the two of us all the time. Also, when we have children, how on earth am I going to give birth? On the ground? Those things aside, I know he has a big heart. He needs to save everyone. That is how big his chest is. As someone who has lived many lives, he has a strong sense of responsibility. Mine is small. I can only love one person. C is different. So please, Sakura o oh Sakura, bring my wish come forth to the distant future. May C always be happy. Please, Sakura. Rumble. Whoa. I stumble. Be careful. From behind me, a man rushes to catch my falling body. I know the flowers are beautiful, 
but they can't stand next to you. Don't try to catch them if you can't, Rachel. Full of love and extremely warm, his voice is. Look at the guy who jumps off the building countless times. I look back at the owner of that gentle voice, scoffing at his warning. Dreamy boy, don't forget, your life is mine now. Albeit short, don't even think of doing anything weird. Just like my eyes, his iris color is also aquamarine. We are really made for each other. Such a shame that it took me so long to realize that simple fact. Because of my circumstances, I have so little time to repay him for his kindness. That is why until the final second, I will be with him. He will not be alone anymore. The guy comes close to me, wrapping his arms around my waist and pulling me into his chest. I return his hug by holding onto his arms. This is what affection is supposed to be like. It has to be from both sides, not just one. If it is the latter, it is unrequited love. Those are bad. Because I know how painful it is that I am trying to protect you. Believe it or not, falling to my death was not something I enjoyed doing. It is equal to breaking every bone in your body, all at once. Sometimes, I would not be dead once I hit the ground, so I had to lay there until I died because of blood loss. Not recommended. 2 out of 10. His embrace tightens as if not wanting to let me go. Then what is 1 out of 10? I ask. What is considered to be the worst kind of death in this guy's mind? For real. His eyes focus on mine. This attention, this affectionate stare, I love him. I adore him. Yeah. My arms go around his back. I once died out of loneliness. I swear it happened. No pain, no wound. My body just kinda stopped functioning. C explains. It feels so painful, so, utterly, painful. I look up to him, tearing up again. My fingers trace each feature of his face. Each part of him is so beautiful, so well defined. He is like someone who comes out of a novel rather than a real life person. No one would ever believe his face was blank. Sorry. It was not your fault. It was never your fault. He shakes his head. Sorry for not being there sooner for you. Then, my hands touch the massive scar on his back. Does this still hurt? Not at all. Don't worry about it. I wish, it was me having the scar. Rachel. His gentle hand runs through my hair. Thanks to that scar that we got to be together. Honestly. Han would still be in your mind if you didn't do it. Don't say his name. I know. I'm sorry for doubting you at first. I should have seen through it from the start. Everything I wanted was a fantasy created by myself. Because of it, I kept lying and lying until you came to me. This man, the one hugging me right now, is the true love of my life. This man is the one who sacrificed the most without asking for anything in return. You protected me when the others were searching for me. You tried hiding me when Han's loyal Yandere's wanted me dead. Since our meeting at the school gate, your image has been in all my ups and downs. For that, I am grateful. I just wanted to see you happy. And that is what I love about you. You know things would never work out, but you still tried. After making their way behind his neck, my fingers force his face closer, making it easier for my lips to reach him. Come here, my hero. I'm not going anywhere. At least, not until this ends. We then exchange another passionate kiss without saying anything else. Crack crack. You can do for another round, right? I take off my outfit and pin C onto the ground. ER. Flicking his forehead, I smile. You can. Give me your love again. We have, all the time in this world. Around us, things start to crumble into the void. Chapter 45 May our Lord and Savior help my soul. My brain was forced to shut down for a moment just now. I swear I could smell something similar to an overcooked steak around me. My brain was fried so bad that it was not simply well done. It was charred to a congratulation level of doneness. Like an enlightened philosopher, I went through all the crucial questions of one's life, namely who am I, where am I, and what am I, in the span of a couple seconds. I reached Nirvana. In fact, I was so stunned out of all space and time that I caught a glimpse of a never-before-seen apocalyptic world. Believe it or not, in that world, there was a bunch of whitish-pink petals flying through the sky while the buildings around me were collapsing into nothingness. On the ground, the wind kept blowing the pink petals up high, 
creating constant streams of flowers. At the same time, high in the sky, lightning flashes were piercing through the dark clouds. There was a clear difference between those two things. One was incredibly breathtaking, and the other was nothing less than the total destruction of all life. The combination of those created a strangely depressing yet beautiful picture of life and death. Sadly, I cannot really remember the place. In my vision, only that pinkish color and the rumbling sounds of the surroundings were clear. But if I really thought about it, that pink shade resembled the color of the sakura tree in the middle of the schoolyard when it bloomed. When I have the time, I will check it out. Maybe I can find some answers once the tree starts blooming. It is still not in the sakura blooming season yet. As for the rest, everything else was blurry as heck. There was even someone there, although I could not remember who they were. Anyway, that is not important right now. My brain probably was playing tricks on me. What needs to be addressed is that Rachel took my lips to my surprise without notice. To judge her fairly, if she did, I still would not have believed her. In addition, I was 120% sure that was no coincidence nor an accident on Rachel's side. The girls in this world never make such a rookie mistake as a kiss. When they said they did, they were simply lying. Also, what Rachel did was not a mere speck on the mouth. No, no. We locked our lips for a little while until I could taste the sweetness of strawberry in her lipstick, then she let me go. After a few seconds of complete idiocy, I finally regained my consciousness and grabbed her shoulders to push her back. Rachel. What are you doing? What is up with her? Why did she suddenly kiss me? As I look into her aquamarine eyes, Rachel seems very odd. I cannot explain this specifically, scientifically, or magically, but her eyes are like those of a wanderer who got lost in a desert but managed to find an oasis. She is showing me senses of relief, pain, and happiness happening inside her aquamarine eyes as tears keep flowing from the corners. Before the kiss, she had an enchanted expression. But now, she looks delighted and somewhat euphoric. I think you are making a mistake, Rachel. You should not have done that. It's me, see aren't you mistaking me for someone else? My hands try to put some space between us, and my feet move backward, albeit very slightly. I do not want to give Rachel any signs of me running away until I am sure of my escape. Goo. Rachel's embrace tightens behind my back. This is bad. This is really bad. Despite having a small body, Rachel has ridiculous strength when she turns to the Yandera side. And, if she kissed me, I may have gotten myself into a damning situation. Shit. I, didn't make a mistake, see. Her voice is soft, almost comparable to a whisper. Hua you? Muttering all the strength within my body, I push Rachel back. Sadly for me, the distance between Rachel and me just keeps decreasing due to her inhuman grasp on my back. She is not using her full power, and I am already helpless. If strength is not the answer, the only way for me to clear this is by using my limitless charisma. I have no idea why you suddenly got so intimate with me, but I would like to tell you one thing. She stares straight at me. If I had eyes, her gaze would look through them, and I would be scared shitless. Luckily for me, I do not have those things. Okay, I'm listening. I think, at the moment, you are just having a suspension bridge effect. None of the feelings that you have for me are real. Choosing my words carefully, I explain. One wrong step and my head will be pulled out from my body by Rachel's unearthly grip. Suspension bridge effect. Rachel tilts slightly to the side. Please do not burden my heart with your cuteness, I need to stay truthful to my current girlfriend. Have you not heard of it? Oh, wait a second. Her embrace is getting looser. This is good. This is working. Maybe, just maybe, if I can divert her attention to everything being a psychological effect, she will understand and let me go. Worth a shot, to be honest. What else do I have for my options? I don't think I have. Would you care to explain? Gladly. So let's have a thought experiment. Say you and I are walking on a bridge, okay. Okay. Rachel nods. Seeing her focus, I suddenly feel talkative. That bridge is the only way to move across from one cliff to the other. When we both set foot onto the bridge, at one point, the ropes and wires tying down the bridge started to unravel and stuff. Because of that, we are now dangerously dangling in the middle of the sky. Oh, dear. That's dangerous. I know, right? At that moment, 
I quickly grab your hands and hug you tightly to not let you fall off. Our heartbeats are much faster than usual because of the fear for our lives. Oh. Rachel's arms are getting even looser. Almost there, see. You are so close. So you are saying my feelings right now are because of something fabricated by this current event. Rachel asks me with a smile on her face. Exactly. You got it. My head bobbles up and down like the toys you see in a car. Hee <laughs> hee. The girl in front of me chuckles. I am not going to lie, but looking at her like this, she truly feels like a genuine person. If she was not violent, Rachel would have been a good girlfriend. I mean, she took care of Han's every need without any complaint like a wife. What she needed was some affection in return. Poor girl. Still, why did she chuckle? Silly old C. I am not the kind of person who will throw herself at anyone. You know that very clearly. I know that. I just do not understand why. Why me? Why now? Once again, the strength of her hug increases. And our bodies get closer. Shit, shit shit shit. Not good. Not good. Han is still over there. Rachel. Rachel. Listen to me. What you are doing is wrong. This is against who you are. No, I am not. This is who I truly am and what I truly feel exactly. Her voice is a little broken. I have a girlfriend. I claim. Yeah, you do have a girlfriend. Rachel sighs. Yeah, so I cannot accept your fate. As I am about to make it clear. you. Rachel pulls me close to her. Our bodies are now hugging each other. And that's me. I am here, see. Your Rachel is here at last. She says with her face buried inside of my chest. The amount of data my brain has to deal with has made it no more than a stupid brick. What have I done to deserve this treatment? This is both a blessing and a curse at the same time. Wait, who am I kidding? This is entirely a curse. I have a girlfriend, god damn it. Do not make me act like Han. See, you don't like me. Rachel looks up at me with puppy eyes. You cannot play this game like that. This is unfair. No I do not like you. Seriously, Rachel, I do not want to lie to you like this. But we just cannot be together. I don't believe you, see. You do like me. She smiles brightly. Then what is the point of asking? Hear me out, Rachel. I have a girlfriend whom I do not want to disappoint. I don't know why you are like this or how, but I cannot allow myself to cheat on Laura. Then, Rachel smiles mischievously. If so, you should hear me out, as well. No. No, 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 no. Do not say those words. I love. You. I'm back to fulfill my duty. Chew. Yes. I will have another brain fart from here, thank you very much. Take your hands away from my boyfriend. Chapter 46, Is This What Being Wanted Feels Like? Also, I am trying to place Iraj higher in terms of everything. I would like to ask for your help in putting a review. Thanks. I love ya. Let my boyfriend go now, Rachel. Laura shouts at the one hugging me in front of my body. Although her voice is loud and clear, that person who still indulges in licking my lips does not seem to pay any attention. Instead, Rachel is now trying to pry open my teeth with her tongue. Despite all my struggle to push her away, she effortlessly overwhelms me with her strength. Rachel. Stop. The class rep yells with a fiery tone. This time, her voice is much closer than before. Back in the past, I always wondered how it would be if I were in the shoes of the protagonist. I finally understand how Han felt when Rachel found him having sex with Laura in the other iterations. It is a distinctive feeling, similar to a blend between embarrassment, shame, and surprise. A cocktail of emotions, I would call it. Something that will get you drunk and kill you if you have too much. Wait, let me change that a little. In my case, this cocktail will kill me if I drink it even when I only take a sip. It is not a cocktail but a concoction of sweet poison. And no, I do not feel any excitement from being found kissing someone else. This is a world of yanderies, not a fluffy, puffy world or an NTR cooking world. The girls will not cry or run away because of disappointment. They will plunge a knife inside one's chest and cut the head of their love rivals. Then, after everything, 
maybe they will take pieces of their loved ones home and put those into formalin jars to preserve those forever. Brides and grooms in weddings usually say till death does us apart. In this world, death does jack shit. By the way, I am positioned in a place that can stare straight at the bed with the door to Han's bedroom behind me. Because of that, it is virtually impossible for me to turn and look at my girlfriend. Plus, Rachel is locking me in this place with her arms, so I have no idea how the class rep looks at the moment. I can imagine, though. Laura's amber eyes would at least be filled with anger and hatred. Her fists should be clenched tightly, so hard they are a pale white color. Without a doubt, Laura can run to find a weapon with the purpose of ending my life as well as Rachel's. Even if she was not a Yandera, she would not be able to keep herself sane seeing this, connection between Rachel and me. This is where my life ends, I guess. Goodbye, world. This iteration is probably the best and most eventful for me. Sayonara, Rachel, Laura, Kurikawa, no matter where you girls are. I will see you in the next reset. Hopefully, you will still have the same current personalities. I would hate to see you turning back to who you once were, frankly speaking, I do not want to return to those lonely days after experiencing this, the way the girls are right now has given me more emotions than any other trial. Didn't you hear me? Let him go this instance. Never mind my speculations. The class rep sounds furious. One thing I notice is Laura's voice somehow seems a bit softer. But I think that is just me. Laura should be mad at me, of course. She has all the rights to go absolutely bonkers. The class rep just saw Rachel kiss me on the mouth while she was my girlfriend. Puha. Thank the Lord, Rachel finally lets me go. I thought she would be doing that forever. Immediately, I ignore Rachel's lusty eyes and turn my head backward to see Laura precisely as I thought. From a quick glance, she does resemble the Laura that killed Rachel in my dream. Well, except for Rachel's favorite kitchen knife and the blood. It is a strange nostalgic feeling, but I am sure I have not seen this. As for Kurikawa, she is right behind Laura, staring at us intensely. In my dream, I thought Kurikawa had died since there was blood and signs of an attack on Laura's clothes before she even made Rachel a dead corpse. I was worried for a second there, honestly. It would make sense if Laura killed Kurikawa, then came to kill Rachel. But my dream did not show me a reason for that massacre. I do not want to see their deaths. These girls deserve better than their disgusting events and should be free to do whatever they want. Oops, losing focus again. Nevertheless, almost all males in the world would burst out and say, Wait. This is not what it looks like, or we are only friends, with their arms in the air, feigning innocence. I swear on my, um, I do not have anything. But anyway, Answers like that are useless in the eyes of anyone. If you are already going down, do it with a bang. Try saying, honey, it is what it looks like. I'm leaving you. Or better yet, say, this girl will be better than you in every way. Therefore, I'm leaving you. That way, the Yandera will be extremely mad, and hopefully, your death will be faster. If not, maybe she will have a mental breakdown, giving you the chance to run away with your mistress. When a person decides to cheat, they know who they want to be with. No matter how much you try to clear your name, the fact is that you have been with another person. What to do when your current girlfriend is behind you and the third wheel is in front, hugging you? Oh, one more thing, keep in mind that this is the world of the psychopathic. The answer is simple, really. And there is only one of those. You pray for a quick death. That is it. No explaining, no promising, just a nice and simple prayer. Say sorry, close your eyes, and hope your demise will be painless. I'm sorry, Laura. Even though I cannot express my face, I still try to make my voice sounds as apologetic as possible. It's okay, see. I know it's not your fault. It's this thieving cat's fault. Oh, thank you for understanding. Eh. But, but, but I, she. What are you doing still holding on to him? Laura grabs Rachel's arms and tries to open her grips. With all the strength Rachel has, I do not believe Laura can force Rachel to release me that easily. Contrary to my belief, everything is smooth and easy. It makes me feel like Rachel intentionally let me go. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kurikawa. Rachel looks at the class rep, smiling brightly. Laura's eyes turn into a scornful look. I feel a chilling gaze even if she is not directing them at me. 
Don't say hello to me, you thief. We are not friends. I did not expect you to be this, brave, Rachel. Kurikawa says. Rachel nods then points her thumb behind. I notice not once does she turn back to look at that sleeping protagonist. It's my nature, you see. Can we leave this room first? I don't like to talk with Han in the background like this. Laura grabs my arm. No. Let me suggest something even better. How about we leave this place, see? It is late at night, and we should get Kurikawa home. Don't worry about me. I have permission to stay. I will go where you guys decide to. When did she get that? Still, I actually agree with Laura. The more I stay in this mansion, the more I feel like I am the protagonist. And no, sir. I do not like that. I already have enough attention. More of it, and I will be dead. Literally. You know what? I think we should leave, too. Wait, there is something strange with Kurikawa. She has bandages all over her arm. What happened to you, Kurikawa? It looks like you were bleeding. Now that I think about it, I saw bleeding on the kitchen floor earlier. Was that yours? Thanks for worrying about me. The bookworm smiles warmly. I had a small cut. The other two girls turn to look at Kurikawa. Suddenly, the air feels a little tense. What happened? A standard cut does not give you this kind of wound. Hee <laughs> hee, what can I say? I am a little clumsy. She laughs wryly. Okay. If you girls want to leave. It is fine. Rachel claps her hands. But first, clean up the blood you made. I am not going to do that. Chapter 47, Laura is true feelings. Also, I am trying to place Iraj higher in terms of everything. I would like to ask for your help in putting a review. Thanks. I love ya. Sha sha sha. Scrub scrub. Come on. Scrub harder. It's not going to clean itself. Rachel points her fingers at various places. I've always wanted to say that line. This bitch. She is taking advantage of my compromise. Good for you, Rachel. Good for you. I look at Kurikawa and see that she is also glancing back. Can you see your results now, bookworm? We would have made C happy. Together. Your actions have brought the number of rivals from one to two. Honestly. When Kurikawa jumped, pulled me down, and pinned me, I knew it was bad news. I never thought she would be on the same team as Rachel, which led to my loss at controlling the situation. Still, I did not want to kill her since he could be worried about Kurikawa. Given the chance and the time, I could not do it. If the situation were different, the outcome might have been different. Ten more minutes, and I could have killed her. Also, that thieving cat, namely Rachel, seemed strange. Rather than being free with her own sentience, she had the aura of a winner. Her tone of voice was not that violent or wild. Instead, I felt she was satisfied with what was going on. Rachel was like an entirely new person. Most significant of all was that she did not fight. She did not talk back. Not at all. There was a drastic change before and after her freedom which did not occur to me. What did you see, Rachel? Come on, Laura, staring at me will not get any work done. Chop chop. Damn you. Currently, under her instruction, we are cleaning the blood stains on the kitchen floor in the middle of the night. They really went nuts with the blood. What kind of cut splashes blood like this? Curious, C asks. A big one. Kurikawa answers vaguely. A bad one. I explain. The less he knows, the better. I am not sure what the dream showed him, but just to be safe, I will keep the truth shut tight. Our fight should never be revealed, or C will never be within our grasp. Now, that did not help one bit. Sorry, there are things I must keep, C. As I glance over to C, Kurikawa is about to dunk her wounded arm into a bucket of water. Wait. Kurikawa. You're gonna have an infection because of that. If you want to help, just take the covers off the pillows and bring them into the laundry room. Don't touch the water, okay? Okay. That double-crossing bookworm replies with a smile. To which Rachel and I stare at her intensely. Seriously, I could not care less about that bookworm. After so many times, there is no way I will place my trust in her lying ass. She deserves to die. 
The stares of the other two bring the temperature down. Even when their eyes are not directed at me, I can still feel the chilling gazes. Shoot. He is catching up fast. See, you know you don't have to help us, right? Rachel comes close to my boyfriend. I also want him to rest. Yeah, see. You should sit down. It has been a long day for you. This is my blood, so you don't have to clean it for me. Kurikawa is still focusing on C even though she is walking away. Where is the laundry room, Rachel? It's to your left. Further. Further. There. Rachel looks up and points at one room. Don't worry. I'd like to help out. C smiles. Helping the girls does not hurt whether or not it is my responsibility. Guys, this is how you keep your girls around. You show them appreciation. Actual work. And take responsibilities. Once again, he starts his narration. Responsibilities. But he repeats one particular word in his head. Yeah. I should clear things out with the girls. Looking over at his location, I notice he has put the cleaning supplies down. I am stupid. Yes. I am dense. Also, yes. But, my IQ would be as low as this floor if I did not realize the fuss. I do not think you are stupid or dense, see. You are perfect just the way you are. I could not ask for anything better. Laura is already my girlfriend. Rachel is, how should I put this, infatuated, in me. Someone is looking at me. That person is Rachel. In the aquamarine color of her eyes is an emotion that I can not quite understand. It is filled with what I think is selflessness. Selflessness. Rachel. Selflessness. Those two should never exist at the same time. Yet there it is. Really, she must know something that I do not. Do I need any proof? I do not think so. The best piece of evidence is the fact that I am still alive. The girls need a high level of affection for me that they somehow decide to let me live. Otherwise, my head would be rolling on the floor right now. When I came into that room, my heart was raging a fire. I almost fainted out of pure spite. She was kissing him. All the blood within my body was boiling beyond any kind of scale. I was hotter than the core of the sun itself. C said it right. I had my fist clenched so tight that there were markings on my palms afterward. At that point, I remembered that Rachel had the knife in the kitchen. Everything was simple. All I needed to do was to find the knife, kill Kurikawa, then cut Rachel's neck with her favorite weapon. With the help of a blade in my hand and a will, I could have done it. But still, still, I had to let it slide. Because he, would be hurt. Nothing else matters if C hated me. Nothing else matters if C thought of me as a monster. I could not fathom the mental anguish I would be if that happened. Even the thought of it brought me nausea. That would be worse than dying. I could take it if C had another person in his life. I could even take it if Rachel stole C's first kiss. However, I would kill myself if C were to run away from me because of my fit of rage. Therefore, I had to put it aside. Who knew there would be any other chance for me to be by his side again? Even if there was, I would still not risk it. I still do not know how to explain the kiss to Laura. How should I begin? Should I start with an apology? Yeah, let's begin with that. I'm sorry, Laura. There is a clear hint of shame in his soft voice. Why are you saying sorry? It was not his fault, never was, never will be. It was Rachel's. Only one person I could direct that seemingly impossible amount of rage, and that was Rachel. I lost once, but that did not mean I would be defeated again, bitch. I am sorry because I kissed Rachel. Say it, see. I. Come on. Do it. I'm sorry for. My throat keeps bugging me. No. Not my throat, it is my conscience. The girls have been quiet to wait for me to speak. This is like a confession of a crime, and they are the judges of my mistakes. Well, in a sense, they are, Rachel may have been the instigator, but I came here and helped her rather than stayed at my place. Rachel, are you going to sit there and hear him belittle himself like this? I thought you would do anything for a loved one? Did I take you too highly? Speak up. Laura, let me clear something up. Before, it was not C kissing me. It was me kissing him. Eh. Do not eh, C. It is only fair for her to admit that. 
I would never see her as an opponent if she did not. In fact, I would never allow her to be around you if she did not even have the guts to acknowledge a mistake. I lay everything in my hands down and sit next to him. Rachel also approaches. Don't apologize if it's not in your control, see. But, I kissed, Rachel. His voice is shaking, and it is breaking my heart. It was my fault, see. I wanted to let you know how much you meant to me. The reason is still unknown, but they are interested in me. Both Laura and Rachel are. And when the girls are interested in me, when I try to protect Kurikawa from infection, they get jealous. Seriously, I feel like I am walking on a string above a cliff. One misstep, and I am dead. C does not know what he has done for me, for us. Because of that, his sacrifices are even more valuable to me. How could I ever harm the guy who fought my battles when no one was there to help? Not to mention, he knew things would make no sense but still did everything to save me. I wish I could tell him. I wish I could let him know why I was obsessed with him. This is probably the first time I have ever seen Rachel not being the first love interest. It is technically Laura, then comes Rachel. Coincidentally, this is also the first time they do not want to be with Han. More importantly, I betrayed Laura's trust. I am also missing a clear rejection for Rachel. I am not in a position that can make them both happy. I cannot even make myself happy. You will you? At the same time, Rachel and I both embrace C. While hugging my boyfriend, I pat him on the head. You did everything you could. Rachel touches him on the face. It is us that is making this hard for you. Don't go home. Stay with us tonight. Did I really do everything I can? After my betrayal, am I still worthy? See, my dear, I whisper in his ears. You are worthy of being loved. Laura's right. She puts his face in the middle of her chest. We can disagree on many things, but not on this, my savior. Savior? If only they knew how many times I have left them to die. If only they knew how I have forsaken their pleas for help to pursue my own mental sanity. I am not who they think I am, I am evidently not. Chapter 48 will be skipped as this is a post where author held CA vote for new heroine. Chapter 49, it is the second day. The brilliant morning light shines on me, waking me from a deep sleep. Through the glass, the sun shines its warm radiance onto my skin, giving me a wonderful feeling. I also notice that the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold, which is unusual if I am at home. Without doors and windows, I usually spend my nights being very cold. Wait, windows. This place has it. Then where the heck am I? As soon as my vision stabilizes from blurriness, I realize I am not in my usual pencil lines made house. Why? Because if I were at home, I would have been able to see the sky since there was no roof, and the black color of the outlines would stick out like a sore thumb. The developers of this game did not put in a top for my house. And the rest of the buildings around my house are inaccessible. What did you expect? Because of that, the rain and the snow seasons were the worst since they did not give me a good time. Usually, I would have to sneak inside Han's place whenever possible or just steal his blankets and pillows. It is not a good thing to say since it makes me sound like a freeloader and decreases my already low self-esteem, but I had no choice. In addition to a ceiling, there is a soft and relaxing sensation under my back that I can not get while staying home. Once you do not own a bed, having one underneath your back is pretty noticeable, I would say. The difference between a cold hard floor and a bed is two ends of a spectrum. There is no comparison. Instead of my own place, I think I am still in one of the mansion's rooms. Now that my mind is out of the haze, I think my memories are back. Hey, see. On my right, the sweet voice of Laura travels into my ears. As I turn to face her, I notice Laura is on her side to look at me. Thanks to the sunlight, her gentle face appears to be shining. I guess this is what people call beaming. Did you sleep well? She asks while smiling softly. And I answer that question as truthfully as I can. The best one I have ever had. How about you? Laura puts her hand on my face and caresses it. Me too. It is a bliss to wake up with the one you love. Ha ha. I let out an awkward laugh to hide my embarrassment. Frankly, how do I even reply to Laura? We are still in the middle of getting to know each other. It is not like we have been together for years, so I cannot be saying the same thing to her. That would be hollow and meaningless. 
The time I have spent to know all the other Loras may have been long, but the time this current Laura has spent with me was short. On the one hand, I do not want to sound like a scumbag by saying the same thing without meaning it. On the other one, I do want to make Laura feel happy. I need serious help. But then, the class rep saves me from overthinking. I'm sorry for making you feel awkward. You don't need to say anything back to me, see. These are what I am feeling. I only want you to know that I think about you and care about you. Thanks, Laura. That sentence of appreciation comes from the bottom of my heart. Where is Rachel? She was also in this room last night, right? Oh shit. I just made an extreme mistake. In this world, you do not talk about another girl in front of one girl. See you will you? Laura inhales deeply. God saves me. Pat pat. Contrary to my thoughts, Laura does not hurt or yell at my face. She gently runs her fingers through my hair instead. Hey 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 hey. Why do you have to mention that girl's name? Sorry. I quickly apologize. Really, I need help to make it work in a relationship. Desperately. Silly, see. She is outside making breakfast for all of us. Kurikawa is also helping. I did my part and went back here to check on you. Let's go out. Breakfast is ready. Laura gives me her hand, and I take it. Yeah, let's head out. As I walk out of the room while holding Laura's hand, many thoughts race through my mind. The more I get closer to the kitchen, where Rachel's clear hummings can be heard, the more vivid last night appears in my head. In the end, after the cleaning, we did not get out of the house as Laura wanted. We stayed inside Han's place because no one else but me. They made the decision based on me. In layman's terms, I was hugely burdened by guilt last night. When my body was embraced by the two girls, I felt something akin to a barrier inside of me was broken. They were giving me their support as tears formed on my face. The two girls in love with me gave me their softest embrace possible. After a while of being loved, I was tired and went to bed with none other than those two. I, did not know such a day could exist. I thought I would be killed. I thought I would be castrated. There were scenes in the past telling me the same situation but of Han. When he was found out kissing someone else, he had his teeth pulled out individually. Then, someone would smash those into bits and put them into his eyes. But yet, Rachel and Laura worked it out with each other, somehow. How hard would it be to suppress your own character settings? I do not know for sure. What came to my mind was that Rachel and Laura really cared. Their voices and their words pushed the dark clouds away. Even Kurikawa, who was not close by, contributed to the ardor. And that was what I have longed for for quite a while. With my wish fulfilled, some of my deepest, darkest emotions seeped through the walls I built inside me. They were only fragments of my hideous self, but no matter big or small, I wished those to be buried deep. In a moment of weakness, when I experienced more warmth than ever from those I truly cared for, I lost a little control of my own thoughts. Fortunately, I did not say those out loud. The day I do so will probably be when I have to say goodbye to them. If they knew how much of a coward I am, I would probably be left alone again. Until now, I still have no clue why the girls were charmed by me. Unlike Han, with a beautiful face, I had none. He lived inside a big mansion with a precious childhood friend who would do anything for him. He did not have to fear not having not enough money or love. Han had the attention of everyone. Everything within this world where I was born was built only to serve one man, the protagonist. Even when his future was ridiculously hard, he still had one. What did I have? None. No face, no house, no future. However, despite all that, the girls considered me to be their savior. Most noticeably was Rachel. When she called for my help, it seemed she was struggling her best to fight back against something invisible. I could only speculate that the system was forcing her to do the things she did not want to. It was evidently clear whenever I tried to force Han on her or ship the two of them together. But to be fair, that could not explain why she kissed me. For a Yandero like Rachel to switch her target, it would at least need to be a life or death situation. Me saving her from the system forcing her onto Han was not nearly enough. There should be something else. What am I missing? Then, I hear Rachel's cheerful voice. Good morning, sleeping head. Today's breakfast is pancakes. Heya, see. Let's eat and go to school together today. 
Kurikawa waves at me. Morning, see. This is probably the first time I have so many friends at home, haha. Han has also woken up. He somehow looks pretty energetic even though it is in the morning. Gu. Come, have a seat. A soft squeeze comes from Laura's hand. We are waiting for you. Do I really need to think about the hows and whys? Kitten. I pull out a chair, and Laura sits on my right. Seeing that, Rachel also finishes up the stack of pancakes and sits on my left. On her left is Kurikawa, and near that is Han. Man, I have to tell you, I slept like a log last night. I swear it sure felt like someone gave me a sleeping pill. It was that good. Han laughs. I also slept pretty well. I nod. See, I told you it was better to stay here. Rachel puts a fluffy pancake on my plate. Bon appetit. Well, see, we should sleep like that more often. Laura casually says while cutting the food into small pieces. Hey, girls, I am not a baby. You girls really did lock me out of it? Kurikawa mumbles. What did you guys do last night at my house? Han stands up with bewildered eyes. We did nothing. We would not do it at your place, anyway. I explain hastily. Hearing that, the guy nods. Oh, then that's fine. As expected of my master. See, say ah. Then, from my right. Say ah. And my left. This is a warm table full of food. But the food is not as warm as the people. Maybe, the questions can wait for another day. Chapter 50, Second Day Currently, I am in the bathroom. Why? Because I need to clean myself, that is why. Just because I am a dispensable character does not mean I should be dirty. I still need to wash my clothes and my hair, you know. To be fair, taking a bath is the only thing I can do besides delivering my lines. It is also one of the few things that can help me eliminate dark thoughts. The soothing warm water does help with negative emotions, I tell you. I would have lost my mind if I did not put my head under the water a few times. Like all the other rooms of Han's mansion, the bathrooms are vast and well equipped with all kinds of things. You would be surprised how big the bathrooms are compared to my place. Just the bathroom is already as big as a third of my house. Then again, what do I expect? Why do I have to compare? But that much is to be expected for Han's mansion. This place has everything he needs since he is the protagonist. It even has its own gym somewhere. Thanks to all of the convenience, the owner, namely Han, does not need to find anything since these places will always have the things he needs. When Han misses something, Rachel will find them or buy them immediately. Rather than a childhood friend, I think Rachel is more of a caretaker. Or a mother. Anyway. Ranged from simple and ordinary items such as a shower, a bathtub, and soaps, to those of, interesting usage such as anal cleaner, a massage table, and aromatic oil, these bathrooms have it all. They even have those inflatable beds so one can have their procreating activities on them while cleaning. If I remember correctly, their respective name is Nuru Massage. In all seriousness, there is no need to go into details. I would just simply say Han was very, um, well taken care of. It is his house, so I have no right to judge what he does inside it and with whom. After all, I am but a freeloader. I do have one question for him, though. Does water really work as a lubricant? I heard it did not. In fact, it should have been much harder to have sex while you were under the shower or submerged in water. Yet the sex scenes did not seem to have anything related to that. I thought they would have difficulty maintaining the friction or balance, but no. Han was able to do anything and everything without slipping and sliding. Probably Iraj physics. I do not know for sure. But I have to digress. At this point, you should know that this is not the first time I have gone inside one of Han's bathrooms. In the past, I had to use this place to wash and clean myself. Albeit there was always the imminent danger of being found out by the Yanderis, I managed to escape unharmed about 70% of the time. I would say a 70% of win rate is an acceptable rate. I think. Back when I still had to sneak in to take a bath, I always had to keep a low profile. Knowing their schedule was one thing. Expecting the bugs and the changes was another. Even though the girls had a specific time and place for their sex scenes, it was a must to try my best to keep my intrusion unknown to them. Especially when Han kept on living longer, it would become harder to keep track of every single one of them all the time. 
The more he survived, the more characters were introduced, and the more chaotic the mansion would become. Therefore it got exponentially hard. In addition, Han's decisions could change the story drastically. For example, choosing to go down Rachel's route would lead to a sex scene in the morning after the first night. On the other hand, not choosing Rachel will leave the bathroom relatively easy for me to access. Sometimes, the difference between a murder and a kiss on the lips is only one sentence. However, things will probably be different from now on. I will not have to be like a little thief just to take a shower anymore. Bless whoever made this possible. Shaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Laura is definitely worth the title, my voice of reason. You should let me in instead. My voice of reason is tainted. Chapter 51, Maybe. In the end, the girls left me alone to do my thing. Not going to lie, but I had to thank them repeatedly in my head because of that. Judging by the looks on Rachel's and Laura's faces when I went inside the bathroom, they definitely had something naughty on their minds. Their lusty eyes clearly betrayed their facial expressions. No matter how hard they tried to hide it, I could still see steam coming out of their mouths. Most likely, they were trying to go in together with me. Maybe taking a bath, or even worse. These thirsty girls. Even though I was unsure why Rachel switched her target from Han to me, I had no doubt she would pin me down the moment she had the chance. As for the class representative, I felt she would give me one of those back scrubbings. However, just because she would not do anything too drastic did not mean I should let it happen. I had to protect my fragile virginity first. Be gone, horny heroine. Do not stand in my way of becoming a wizard. How did it come to the situation anyway? What did I do to attract these girls so much that they became like that? Such mysteries may or may not be uncovered. You know what? Let us analyze my current situation to grasp a deeper understanding of the girls. I think it is about time I do so. For some reason, I feel like the more I postpone this, the worse the circumstances will be. First and foremost, Laura, the class representative. For one reason or another, she became my girlfriend. Contrary to previous iterations, Laura has been strictly paying attention to me rather than the protagonist of this world. Also, she was the one who asked me out and gave me the first piece of warmth in this world. Thanks to that, I was able to smile for the first time. Grateful as I was, her motives were greatly oblivious to me. As a person born in this Yandera world, there was no way Laura would be in love with me without a particular reason. One thing that I should also note is her protection. Laura has been keeping an eye on me almost all the time. From going home together to spending the night at Han's mansion, the class rep has always been there for me. We even woke up together. The second one is Rachel, a .k. .a Han's childhood friend. Now, seriously speaking, Rachel is a weird one. Throughout the day yesterday, she has had a drastic change of personality. When we first met in the morning, she was giving me glares. Then, slowly, it turned into many other things. Especially after lunchtime, she was behaving very weirdly. As if she was lost or something. The most unexpected change was that Rachel single-handedly changed the original storyline into something unknown to me. Because of me, Laura, and Kurikawa, everything set up for her event was ruined beyond fixing. Well, probably my fault was the biggest. But it was a team effort. Our invitation has made it impossible for her to proceed with her route. Now that I am thinking about Rachel's event, I should also try to understand what happened during the short time I was in Han's room. I had no idea what she needed, but Rachel needed help. Her whole body was shaking violently. And to add on top of that, she was crying while clutching onto the fabric. At that moment, I knew what she was thinking. She did not want to go with the story anymore, but the system probably forced her to do it. I could understand that, to be honest. After years of trying, I gave up because the system would always find a way to force the heroine to go back on their route. But now, in this iteration, somehow, they can be safe from it. They can be free. Maybe, I should start fighting once again. This time, maybe, things will change for the better. Regardless, before igniting the long dead fire in my heart, I need to finish the current challenging task. First, you need to tilt the brushes a little, see. If you make it so straight, it will hurt your gums like before. They are especially delicate since they are connected to your nerves. Laura patiently explains to me the contents of my mouth. Not just that, but she is holding a brush herself to demonstrate like I am some kind of kindergartner. Oh, the shame. Please, allow me to explain why my girlfriend is here. First, you would think Rachel would be with me since the girls would not leave me alone, just like they were the whole day yesterday. That would be correct if Rachel did not leave the scene to make lunch for us. Laura, my legal girlfriend, was then entrusted by her with helping me with anything I needed. However, before leaving, Rachel even went as far as threatening the class representative to behave when she was gone. Of course, Laura did not take that so well, yet she had to. Not that she did not want to be there for me, but she was slightly mad because of Rachel's attitude. 
In Laura's words, Rachel acted as if she was your girlfriend instead of me. To which I stayed silent. Like, dead silent. For a moment, I swear I was deaf. There was no need to talk about something that would bring me my demise. By the way, in the end, I asked Rachel if she had a spare toothbrush. The thought of having a stinky mouth was not pleasant for me. Personal hygiene has always been one thing I care about most. After all, it was the only thing I could control. I could wash under the shower and in the bathtub relatively easily. It was not rocket science. Hence, I have been doing so for thousands of years. However, having a mouth, another problem arises for me to deal with it. The main issue was that I never tried to copy Han, Rachel, or anyone since there was no need to learn how to keep it clean. Without previous experience, I have no idea how to use the brush and the paste. After a while of struggling with the items Rachel gave, I have given up on trying to brush my teeth by myself. I did try, but it was my first time, so accidents occurred. Because of a quick movement of my hand that caused my gums to bleed, the class rep is now helping me clean my teeth as if I was a baby. But that is not the reason for my shame. Okay, maybe about 50%. Honestly, I am still a tad bit surprised by her sudden appearance. She outright busted the door open when I accidentally squealed due to the pain from scratching my gums. Not only that, but she also had the chance to take a good look at my naked body. Laura's face got noticeably red because of my dangling dongle. However, contrary to those cliches where a girl would run outside while screaming, Laura took her time to examine my nether region. Her ember eyes clearly lit up with curiosity and fascination more than anything else. The class rep even mumbled to herself about whether or not it would fit her. I wish I could find a place to die of shame, is my key to life really that big? Truth be told, I know hand size. It is not as big as mine. But people. Be not afraid. Size is not all. It is about technique. Having a big dick only gets you 99% of the way. Besides, what use of such a meat rod except for breeding? I cannot possibly use it to hit someone. Can I? Wave. The class rep waves her hand in front of my face to get my attention. See? Are you okay? You have been staring at me for a while. Oh, sorry. I was a bit distracted. So I should brush my teeth like this. I mimic Laura's hand movement. We both choose not to speak about the previous ordeal. I swear to God I would die if someone mentioned it. Yes. A bit more. If you can get it to 45 degrees, that will be ideal. Yes, just like that. Chapter 52, Kurikawa There is only me left. Irk. Kukuk. I'm home. Closing the cold, metallic door behind my back, I am greeted by nothing but the chilling air of the corridor. Somehow, even though it is not the cold season, the temperature in my house still makes my skin crawl. Unlike the place I just got back from, in this place, there exists no warmth that can bring me the similar comfort of being by his side. This is the place of my parents, where I sleep almost every night. Frankly speaking, I would not go into detail to describe this place. There is no need to do something so boring and redundant since it is just like the other houses around this area. White walls, an orange roof, and a garden to the sides, all of that. Before knowing C, I thought it was normal. I never paid any attention to the similarities between the houses. Everything was how it should have been. But now, I know the reason why. When everyone gathers at Han's mansion, there is no need to create any distinctive features of other places. If Han's villa had enough rooms for everyone, there was no need for us to go back to our respective houses. Therefore, the developers would not need to create any distinctive features for the exteriors. The interior, on the other hand, is different. Sigh. I breathe out heavily, disgusted by my own world. If it was not for C, I would have never awoken from this long, perverted nightmare. Well, almost. According to his words, my event is yet to come. I wonder how this world's disgusting system will take hold of me. Rachel was forced to have sex with someone she did not want to. As for Laura, I doubt her event will commence normally. However, she was supposed to be in the hands of a bunch of bullies in the past. Then, what will I have? It is clear that there would be an event to make us fall in love with Han. Yet, the information I have on my hands is too little to deduce anything. The only way I can get more is to pay attention while C thinks to himself and work from there. Nevertheless, 
I would prepare myself for the worse. That is the reason why I came back home. Maybe it will help, maybe not. But knowing and not doing anything is not in my mind. A few items will be of use, I hope. In front of me right now is the dark hallway. The corridor of this house is like the jaws of a gnawing monster, about to devour my soul entirely. In addition to the chilling air, this place also wants to decrease my sanity. In addition to its low temperature, the house is almost silent. After saying my greeting, no one returns my call. In a way, it is fortunate since I do not have the mood to talk to anyone. Furthermore, since I did not get home last night or make a call, there would have been some consequences. Why would I say my greetings if no one was at home? As a good girl who listens to her parents' words, I must. And because it is a habit that was hammered into my head. Also, saying I am home will save me from another trouble if someone is actually present for whatever reason. It is the exact opposite inside Han's mansion, where that man now resides. Shaking my head to get rid of his images, I take my shoes off and continue deeper into the house. I came back to get some alone time to think about what I should do from this point onward, and that is what I am going to do. After all, mother is not at home at this time of the day. Click. The light is turned on, illuminating the whole house. Instantly, my visual field is filled with a familiar scene. On two sides of the corridor are the blank white yellow walls. Unlike the other place where the walls are decorated with drawings and pictures, the walls of my house are very plain. As I walk on the wooden floor, it creaks loudly, bringing in the only sounds besides my breathing to this place. And the more I travel inside, the more a horrible stench penetrates my nostrils. It is a sour, damp, and musky smell of garbage. There is also a light scent of alcohol in the air. She probably made another mess again. Mother is always like that when she gets back from work. Cling clang. My feet accidentally kick a bottle of wine when I walk past her room. She did not even close the door after leaving for work in the morning. Due to the smell, I do not need to peek inside to know what kind of garbage mother sleeps on. Her room is filled with filth, such as alcohol bottles, cigarette buds, and spoiled foods that have been left there for many days until she decides to throw them away. Not only that but there are countless black bags filled with dirty items inside. Somehow, she thinks that is normal. On the one hand, she lives among a bunch of garbage and sleeps next to them without a care. On the other hand, she walks outside the door with the most expensive perfume she can get her hands on. I mean, I understand her profession requires her to be dressed up loosely to appeal to many men, but she does not need to sleep next to garbage like that. Sigh. My feet pick up the pace, and I walk straight to the bathroom and throw my dirty uniform into the washing machine. There is no need to care about mother right now. Shayayayay. I turn my head upward to the shower and close my eyes. Hot water splashes onto my face, washing away all the dirtiness that accumulated after a whole day. The water can help me get rid of the dust and oil on my face and hair, yet it cannot aid me with the turmoil inside my heart. At this point, I do not know anymore what I should do. My world has crumbled since yesterday. The reason is simple, really. Unfortunately for me, that simple reason cannot be fixed. Am I real? Or am I just some kind of character inside of a game? I know I live inside a two-dimensional world, but is my existence, or anyone's existence in this world, real? That question keeps bothering me. From the moment we met C until now, after seeing the struggles of Laura and Rachel, I cannot help but think about the word freedom and the existence of everyone in this world. Are we alive? That is probably the biggest question. Such a philosophical question will never be answered. Who can answer it? really. Having read many books, or as C put it when the system forced me to read many books, that philosophical inquiry is still hard for me to answer. The characters in my books, are they truly alive? Do they make their own choices? Or, just like Rachel before being touched by C, everything they do is controlled by an invisible system, a higher being, an author? If the answer is a yes, then who is this being? What are they? Does freedom mean I can make my own choices? Can I live the life I want to? Then, what if I do not know the decisions I make are under some kind of influence? That is essentially how characters in a story should behave, except for a few that break the fourth wall. And even when they are breaking the fourth wall, it is still under a predefined script. I am in a similar situation to those in my books. The characters in my books, until the end of the story, 
until their final happy or tragic ending, will have everything written down to its tiniest details. That chills me to the core, even the warmth of the water cannot make that kind of cold disappear. Pa. Waking myself up from a spiral of existential crisis, I gently slap my cheeks. Rather than thinking about that, I should focus on what to do next. Yesterday was eventful, to say the least. I had the chance to witness the forces of this world in the act. At the same time, I had the opportunity to observe the struggles of the affected. These made me realize we were facing something much grander than we initially thought. Out of pure coincidence, Laura was freed by C's touch. After that, she tried her best to tie Rachel down with the story using her newfound privilege. I must say I understood her thinking in a way. Personally, I would not feel comfortable seeing my mortal enemy be freed both mentally and physically. There is no need to keep a ticking time bomb next to you. That is even more accurate considering their history together. It would create massive complications for me if Rachel was gone, though. Laura was slowly turning into a second Rachel, and I was unsure I could handle her personally. If I left Rachel alone after her event was completed, she would feel dead inside and perhaps find a way to kill herself due to shame. It was my double crossing that Rachel managed to be saved by C. Really, it was an underhand tactic. But it worked. As long as it worked. At least Rachel now owes me, so my chance of success should be higher. There should be a higher chance for me to get my freedom. I understand the class rep told me she would let me be by C's side if we work together. To be honest, I do not believe her. It all boils down to trust between us. And at this moment, Laura has the least in my book. Still, I think we all agree on one thing, and that is how we would kill to get rid of our shackles. Rachel, Laura and I would never allow ourselves to be under the influence of something to do that we do not like. Especially in the case of Han, who has always been backed up by an invisible system. From what I can see, I am in a disadvantageous position compared to the other two. Therefore, I need to prepare myself for the worst. Chapter 53, The Start of a Freaking Harem Yawn. Unconsciously, my mouth opens as large as it can. At the same time, unable to control myself, I automatically inhale, filling both my nostrils and my throat with the cool air of the morning. Right after that, and completely involuntary, my whole body shivers a little. It is not because I am cold, per essie. I just cannot seem to be able to control my body while it is taking in some fresh air. Something would fly inside if you leave your mouth open like that. Laura puts her hand in front of my face, blocking whatever may travel inside. Even though you are super cute, you should only show your vulnerability when we are alone, see. At the same time, Rachel sneaks her hand behind Laura's, trying to put it closer to my face. A amazing, as expected of my master. A couple steps away. I can hear Han's voice complimenting something. Not stopping there, he even takes a small notepad out and starts scribbling on it with a ridiculous speed. Walking, hand in hand, keep it cool, straight face. Wait, no, no. Scratch that. Master doesn't have a face. Okay, where was I? What the heck are you writing down, man? And stop looking at me like some kind of rare specimen. Ah. Look at you yawning. So cute. Hugging my arm close to her chest, Rachel says. Somehow there are hearts inside of her aquamarine eyes. Do not ask me how. It is Iraj's physics. As long as the laws of thermodynamics are not violated, everything else is possible. Because my arm is technically touching her, I can feel the softness of her chest wrapping around it. I do not want to sound like a pervert, but her breasts are softer than anything I have ever touched before in my life. Not to mention the size of those badonkadonks. Gua. Goosebumps rise on my skin. Mamma mia, this is simply heavenly. Rachel, I would appreciate it if you stayed away from my boyfriend by at least 20 feet. Laura glares at Rachel. My right hand is wrapped by Rachel's softness. My left is hugged by Laura's. With that said, it is without a doubt that I can feel how firm they are. Even when her size is not as big as Rachel's, I have to say that Laura's cup size has its own charm. Being a good man, I will never say which one is bigger. That is like asking to be shot in the head. Fufu. Strangely enough, Rachel just puts on a victory smile. TCH. I can hear Laura's annoying click. Her gaze is so fierce I can feel it even when it is not directed at me. A amazing. 
Han continues writing his notes. Sigh. I have no intention of knowing what that guy is doing. He is dead set on becoming my disciple to learn the way of love no matter how much I told him I had no experience. To make matters worse, he said he would copy my every action. Nevertheless, the two girls on my side should come before him. Han can copy everything for all I care. At this point, I am numb to changes. They have been clinging to me since we exited Han's villa, Rachel, and Laura. At first, they did not grab both of my arms like now but kept a certain distance. But the more we walked, the closer they came to me, until there was no space between us, which led to the current situation. Even when I told them that Han was watching, they asked me what was wrong with just hugging. Since I was dumb, I could not answer a word and accepted my defeat. If I were to ask whether or not I hated it, the answer would be no. Like all the healthy men in the world, I love being sandwiched between two beauties. However, I could not possibly let them know that fact, or the two girls would not let me be alone anymore. In addition to that, and I do not want to sound like a pervert by saying this, but not only did the yawn give me fresh air, it also brought in the scent of perfume from Rachel and Laura. While the two were pressing themselves onto my body, I was enveloped by their sweet fragrance. Even though they used the same shampoo and conditioner after the bath in the morning, I could still distinguish their scents somehow. Rachel has a hint of floral fragrance surrounding her body. I did not think much of it at first except for how relaxing it felt. After a while, it gives me a kind of nostalgic feeling for some reason. One would expect her to smell like oranges since her favorite dish is orange chicken, but no. Her smell is very flowery. Laura on the other hand, gives me a zesty, minty scent. Contrary to Rachel's nostalgic aura, Laura's feels kind refreshing, and uplifting. The weird thing is I feel a sense of nostalgia after a while, similar to Rachel's case. Truth be told, I have no idea how I got the ability to give her such a distinctive description. So you will have to take my word for it. It makes me wonder how it will taste if I am to kiss her in the future, though. If everything goes well, that is to be expected. Sproing. My pants feel tight all of a sudden. Arg. What on earth am I thinking? Eyes forward, dig downward, see. Are you already forgetting your motto? Kissing is not so important right now, but staying alive is. I must not let the horny consume me. Honestly, with how easy things have been going with everything, there are good and bad things all at once. The good thing is I have been able to experience many new things, even to the extent of being a relationship, which I have never done before. But the bad thing is I am getting distracted. And in this world, distraction means death. Because of the sudden bulge in my pants, I now have to lean forward a bit to hide my boner. I sure hope Rachel and Laura do not take notice of my change, otherwise, I will probably die of shame before they decide to do anything to me. Oh, see, why are you walking like that? Still holding on tight, Rachel is the first on to ask. Shit. If you feel uncomfortable, no matter how hard it is, I will help you get rid of that issue. Laura states. Truly, thank you. Yet, this, is not something you can solve like that. Think, see, think. What can I say now? Worry not, my friends. I just have an erection while thinking about doing lewd things with you. No. 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 Not like that. Obviously, I will not discuss such a thing with the two girls. How would they even look at me if they found out I was analyzing their smell while imagining kissing them? The worst thing is, rather than looking at me with piercing gazes while saying disgusting, Rachel and Laura will most probably be delighted. After all, they are yanderies. And the fact that I am paying attention is something the yanderies will take pride in, even ecstatic. Knowing me being interested in them that way, they will most definitely try to find a way so we can have some alone time for some action. After everything is said and done, I will be found cheating and killed by either Rachel or Laura. For that reason, I am out. The more they fall in love, the greater my chance of dying a horrific death. I do not want to become like Han. No, sir. Not when two of them, I repeat, two of them are infatuated with me right now. Not to mention Kurikawa, who went home for something. I am not trying to sound optimistic, but she seemed to be interested in me in some way as well. Since we left the villa, the girl with the bang was nowhere to be seen. I must say that not seeing the bookworm is a little disappointing. Without her, the trio will not be complete. Arg. 
What the heck is going on with me? Why am I thinking like this? Those kinds of thoughts will lead to certain doom. See. You are clearly getting the girls way too much into your head. See you hey a See you 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 hey a a a a a a a. Taking a deep breath, I continue forward to school. No more weird thoughts. No more weird thoughts. To keep my mind busy, I mumble a mantra and hope it would work. Anyway, that concludes the first time ever I yawn. It feels kind of weird having no control over your mouth and your body no matter how short it can be. Even when I try my best to suppress the urge to yawn, I still cannot make a difference. Biology is weird. Physiology is weird. Chapter 54, I never knew my school life could be this colorful. Hey, see. Still hugging my arm close to her chest, Rachel calls my name. At the same time, Laura glances over curiously. Yeah. Smiling brightly, the blonde-haired girl shows me a huge box covered in a yellow piece of fabric. That box has a cubic shape, and each side is probably about 15 inches. At first glance, it seems like a lunch box. I remember seeing Laura making food this morning while humming a happy tune. That thing is by no means small. Of course, Rachel's strength is ridiculous, so she can hold on to something big like that with only one hand. If it were me, I would have to lift that box with both and still feel heavy. How she even moves so lightly while holding onto it is beyond me. But I should still ask to carry that thing for her. It is simply the right thing to do. This is only out of courtesy, I swear on my sentience. There is not a single sliver of hidden ulterior motives behind it. Not even because of that kiss Rachel gave me that night. I was not moved or shocked out of this world or anything. I think. That looks heavy. Why don't you let me help you with it? Rachel's face beams up after hearing those words. Actually, she has been looking happy since when she turned toward me. No need. Even though I look like this, I'm actually pretty strong. On the other side, Laura stares at Blondie. For some reason, the class rep sounds exceptionally chilling. She's right, see. Just let her carry it. But when she turns back to me, everything is normal again. And also, if you have to carry that thing, you won't pay much attention to other things such as your surroundings. I don't want you to trip and fall. The class rep is correct. No matter how much I want to give Rachel some assistance, as long as they both keep clinging onto my arms, I cannot really hold anything else in my arms. We would be sad if that were to happen. I don't know how far I'd go seeing you hurt. Rachel claims. Oh. Is that so? To be honest, I do not know how to respond to that. It still feels weird to have Rachel by my side rather than seeing her on Han's side. Speaking of Han, he has been walking with bewildered eyes all this time. Some people just don't get that they are nothing but a nuisance. The class rep sighs. Rachel, for the last time, C is my boyfriend. I can take care of him on my own. Please stop hugging my boyfriend. Thank you very much. Rachel smiles at the class rep and turns back to me. C does not mind having two people by his side, does he? My arm on her side can feel a nudge by two gentle friends in front of Rachel's chest. I do. I do not. My dear, lying is no good. I know you have a big heart that can house all of us. Rachel's head is now leaning on my arm all happily. She even snuggles up closer to my chest. How the freak am I so bad at lying? Looking at Blondie being all cuddly, in Laura's chocolate eyes, fiery anger can be seen. Rising from her deep dark pupils of her is unequal and unfathomable rage. In addition, there is a sudden change in the aura covering her body, making the air around me feel hot at once. Even Han walking further away is affected and making a weird face. Mommy, I think I am going to die today. Thanks for all the good things that have happened until now. Most importantly, Please let the girls achieve their final happiness when I am gone. They all deserve that. Okay. I have said my prayers. Take me great darkness. Shameless. That is it. No stabbing. No neck breaking. Hallelujah. I prefer living rather than dying any day. Contrary to my death wish, the class representative only squeezes my hand tighter than before to make her presence known, probably out of jealousy. Even though she uses more strength than before, Laura's grip does not cause me any pain. On the other hand, I can actually understand why she does that. The class rep is trying to tell me to pay attention to her in her own way. 
Damn, she is cute. I hope you don't feel too uncomfortable. I still remember seeing your frown because I used too much force last time. The class rep is so thoughtful. It's okay. I'm all good. It feels like I am about to shed a tear thanks to her kindness. Why don't you snuggle up with C just like me? Rachel sure likes to poke the bear. Unlike a certain someone, my relationship with C is based on emotions, not physical touch. This time, the class rep does not even bother to look at her rival anymore. Wait. Why did I think of that rival word? Oh, shit. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't tell me you're gonna have just platonic love for C. It's not going to work, you know. I am not yet ready for anything too intimate. Actually, I may die out of fear. However, what would happen if things were to come to that point? Spending the night with Rachel? With Laura? With, both of them? What the fuck are you thinking, you horny mutt? No, 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 no. Stop fantasizing. You are going too fucking fast. Remember that you are no main character. The stimulation is frying my brain. It will get physical when C is more comfortable with me. Laura explains. I don't want to rush C into something he clearly doesn't like. Thank you for that, Laura. Anyway, putting that aside. C, we should have lunch together. I prepared a meal for all of us. You, me, Kurikawa and even Laura. Rachel says the first part merrily, but the last part is almost a grunt. It is as if she considers that to be a chore. If you did not want to make lunch for me, you could have just not done so, Rachel. The class representative frowns her eyebrows. I did not ask for it. I mean, I get the reason why she acts like that. Rachel still is a Yandera and all. Heck, everyone is a Yandera far as I know. Blondie does not want to care for anyone except for the one she holds dear in her heart. That is a cold hard fact. Especially when a third party, in this case, Laura, is on my other side. It has been a miracle seeing these two trying to maintain a balance. I sincerely hope this can last until long into the future since that is something I do not wish to lose. If you think I wanted to make something for you, you are dead wrong. The only reason you have a portion is that C could have given you his, and I don't want him to share food with you. Blondie is right. I would have done it. But damn, Rachel is harsh with her words. At least she does not know Laura and her were supposed to be mortal enemies in the previous alterations. If she did, she would have been even more furious. That's great. One quick question, though. Where is the portion for Han, Rachel? Poor guy lost his one and only childhood friend to a mob. I plead guilty on this one. Yeah, I made one for him, too. Blondie nods. You did. From another location, Han says. Whoa. The tone of his voice confuses me a little. Why do you sound surprised? I mean, Rachel was busy with everything, so I doubted there would be anything for me. I could not possibly ask her to make me something extra while she was already busy. It is her first time getting a boyfriend, so I don't want to get in her way, you know. Where was this level of revelation when she was into you? Or is this some kind of weird opinion from the third person point of view? You will benefit a lot if you keep this up, Han Sam. But isn't it normal for her to make you lunch? I unconsciously ask him out of guilt. It is. Although it is also about time I start living on my own. I can't be relying on my childhood friend all the time, especially when she has gotten herself a good man. Han nods to himself. Life is just going to get way harder from now on. Man, now I feel bad for stealing these girls away from him. But everything is not in my control, so that is that. I can only help set him up for other girls in the future. Rachel, Laura, and possibly Kurikawa are already too much for a guy like me to handle. See. He looks straight at me. And with a stern look, he says, take care of my precious childhood friend for me, will you? Rachel is like a family member to me. If you make her cry, I am coming for your ass. Got it? Please do not say it in such a misleading way. Don't come for my ass. I'm not gay. Chapter 55, Kurikawa Mother After a long warm bath to mentally prepare, I am now making my way through mother's room. Seriously speaking, this is the one thing I dislike the most. Normally, I would not do such a thing as touching this space of hers, but today is not the same as usual. 
there is something that I desperately need to accomplish fast. Inside mother's room, the putrid smell of garbage, alcohol, and cigarettes permeates the air no less than the smell of corpses during the plague. It has become so disgusting because every piece of filth here has been left alone and untouched for at least a few weeks. One smell is already bad enough to make one vomit, let alone a mixture of three different kinds of horrid smells in the same place. If I did not know any better, I would have thought this room was some kind of garbage dump. Not one spot is clean under my feet. There are always cigarette buds or spilled drinks and food on the floor. In fact, walking through everything without touching them can be called an achievement on its own. Whenever I try to move, I will have to shuffle the garbage around before finding a stable place to put my feet. In a way, I was swimming through a pool of filth. It is hard to believe anyone could live in such a condition. But no matter how disgusted I am, there are times that I need to face reality head on. Mother's room is the only place in this house with a mirror. And a full body mirror at that. Everything else has been either covered by me or broken and thrown out. There was no need to look at my reflection all the time. I am not my mother. Once a year for a haircut may already be too much. But now, I need to see how different I am from the other girls. For what is yet to come, there needs to be a plan. That plan depends heavily on, him and how he looks at me. At this point, I have no doubt that C knows what is happening to me. Moreover, after so many trials, he should understand how I got all of them. However, even when C remembers all the defects on my body, I should still hide or make them as less visible as possible. Knowing about it is one thing, and him acknowledging it is another. The last thing that I want to hear from him is a pity. Nothing mother did to me would ever hurt me as much. As I make my way toward the mirror, both of my ears can hear the loud and thumping sounds of my heart. I can feel myself getting hotter in the chest, but strangely, my fingers are freezing. Except for the area in front of my chest, nothing is warm as it should be. Even my legs are refusing to move as if they are bound by shackles made of lead. If I had the chance, I would never get close to this accursed room. Sigh. Even when I tried to prepare beforehand, I could still not do this without feeling anything. That mirror really is my bane. It has always been placed over there, by mother's bed. The distance between me and that favorite thing of mother's is just a few steps far. But at this point, that seems further than a thousand miles. The longer I stay in this room, the more nervous I am. From the bottom of my heart, I know if I want to make it quick, I should try to calm down and get it over with. However, things are always easier said than done. See, please give me strength. If you accept a killer like Rachel, will you also do that to me? Looking at my reflection in the full body mirror, I can confirm my feelings again. It is the same as before. I hate this body. I really do. There really is no doubt about that. My eyes can see very clearly the reflection in that mirror. Unlike Rachel and Laura, who have unblemished white skin that they can be proud of showing to him, mine has imperfections and bruises everywhere. Some scars were made by cigarettes, some by bottles smashed into my flesh, some by scratches, and some I do not recall how I got them. They must have been there since I was a child and grew up with me. As for the bruises, they formed from punches and slaps. All over my skin, patches of purple and blue are never a rare scene. Usually, new ones will form before old ones can heal. And why I have so many scars is I never got to be checked in the hospital. Mother had to hide her masterpiece, of course. I know I have a good figure. My breasts are firm and voluptuous, and my lower body is what people would describe as the C. The system must have created it that way so that I can appeal to the audience much better. What is there to like if I had scars and an ugly figure at once? Such a game would not sell in a million years. Sadly, all those little good things would be made trivial by the horrendous scar I have to hide with my hair. The thing is as big as my hand. It is discolored, disfigured, and disliked. While the rest of my face is a pinkish white, that thing is covered with the color of burnt flesh. Whenever I try to smile or laugh, the veins underneath the scar would twitch like a blood-sucking parasite. Some heal and fade after a long time, but this one does not. In fact, it has only gotten more morbid throughout the years. C never talked about what I hid behind my hair. I think he respected my privacy. And for that, I am grateful. But the fact that he knew about this hideous thing that completely destroyed the top half of my face makes me want to rip my face off. The only way to make it unknown was to grow my bangs so long that it covered everything. 
be it created by the system or not, the hatred I harbor for my existence is undoubtedly vast beyond anyone's understanding. In fact, the realization that this world is fake and fabricated has made it even worse for me to feel anything uplifting about myself. I thought that with the knowledge of everything being a bunch of codes and drawings, I would have a better view of myself. Just like what happened in C's world, I made another mistake. I keep on making the wrong guess. Because I do not feel better after that at all. Everything that happened until this moment, the objects thrown at me, the words people have used to scar my soul, was all just for a show. What I had to endure did not bring me any kind of fulfillment or lesson so that I could make myself a better person. No. All those things I have in my memories were put in there, so I could become a meaningful character of one disgusting world. A heroine. The reason for my suffering was probably the lack of depth in my character. This world needed me to feel all of what I did. To build up the character's specialization, Rachel was neglected for a long time while having an unrequited love. Despite her upright nature, Laura was almost raped to death by a bunch of bullies. Using that kind of logic, a normal Kurikawa would not be enough for the theme of this game. For the game to be famous, its heroine needed to be unique in a way or two. The character called Kurikawa had to be put down, stomped on, and humiliated to create what I assume to be traits. Until now, every girl has had circumstances that create triggers for them to graduate as a Yandera. The author probably thought a Yandera had to be born out of despair and distress. They are probably correct. In short, my misery was created to give others a sense of amusement. They can laugh at it out of cringe, or they can cry because of it out of sympathy, but I was put on display. Do I take pride in that? Not at all. I have no need to have my life controlled and ridiculed like that. Yesterday, when I was trying to change something, I did not have the time to think about myself. The result of that was the freedom that Rachel received. And judging by her attitude after her kiss, I guess she got something invaluable that changed her completely. What I did was right. And it came from my own volition, not because of the system controlling me. It turned out that being able to do something out of my own free will was a kind of overwhelming joy I was never allowed to have. I felt, free. But now, when I am all alone with no voices other than my own, the truth hits me harder than mother did. C is not here. I will not be able to hear his warm, caring, and sometimes hilarious thoughts anymore. The only person that may understand my feelings is C. We are souls sharing the same fate. C and I are bound by the harsh reality this world has created to match our personalities. He has suffered so much that I could see myself in him. Unlike me, who has a physical scar, C's mental scars are uncountable. Only C will understand me. If so, do I really need mother? Chapter 56, Kurikawa Inferiority I am an only child. No, let me rephrase that. There are only two people in our family. If you can call it a family, that is. I think it should be clear there is no one I can call my siblings. And, of course, no father as well. The furthest point my memories can go back to has never had a father figure present. All this time, this family has always been keeping the number to the bare minimum, mother and me. Even though she never tells me anything, I believe somewhere out there, one of mother's clients is my father. At least, that is what I can deduce from the information I gathered from looking at her. As for siblings, I do understand why she does not want to get me a brother or a sister. In fact, I would not wish for anyone else to live here under the same circumstances. Nevertheless, that seems to be my setup created by this world. Now, to make everything simple for my mind, initially, I should put aside the aspects of everything being fake. The memories of mother are what created who I am right now, and that is factual. No matter how much I want to deny it, she is at home every night. I will have to cook for her, clean up the mess she creates, and do whatever she tells me. Unlike Han and Rachel's families, who will never show up, mother lives here. She will have her voice heard by any means possible. Mother is not a mere description amongst many of the game or a shadow person but a real, living being. The black bags full of trash, the empty bottles of alcohol rolling on the floor, and the pain I get from disobeying mother is all the evidence I need. Even when I know this world is made from a bunch of codes and my suffering was for naught, the scars I have on my body are still apparent and throb every time the weather changes a little. It matters not if they are real or fake since they are here to stay for the rest of my life. Whether or not I like them, I have to accept that truth. Alas, 
I have gotten acclimated to my situation. Time is indeed a remedy for any kind of illness and disability. Ugh. But strangely, my mouth lets out a revolted sound. I guess this body is still something even the most destructive power of all creation cannot correct. Eyes quickly turn away to look at the door to mother's room. No longer do I want to look at this broken body anymore. If I could, I would smash that mirror to pieces and destroy the tattered reflection of mine. Sadly, doing that will make mother tremendously angry. When she is furious, well, things happen. The author of this game has been so thoughtful of their audience. Their characters are not loved because we are a bunch of tools. No. Rather than giving me a basic and generic backstory like how Han could save me from an amateur pickup artist, they gave me all of this, thing to look at. We could have had a cliché situation where I saw Han saving a kitty and fell in love with him. Or I could have seen Han walking an old lady across the street and thought he was a kind person. But those were too mainstream for the developers. 2. Normal without an impact. They need to make me three-dimensional. They need to make me quirky and characteristic. There needs to be a way so that people can distinguish me from all the other characters like Rachel and Laura. They can go eat crap for all I care. I need to get out of this place. Disgusted by my existence and the pungent smell inside the room, I make my way back upstairs to my room. School is about to start, after all. He must be waiting for me to come back. As I drag my feet through the various rubbish on the floor, my head wanders off to his side. The image of that faceless person slowly appears within my imagination, and I smile, knowing he still lives. Even more so, he must be thinking of many weird things about the game and us. Yeah, us. We problematic few. In my imagination, I can see two other girls by his side, too. One is a blonde girl with aquamarine eyes as beautiful as gems, and the other is a brunette girl with chocolate eyes as warm as the everlasting hearth. Rachel suffered with her love for Han, so she became violent. She had never been accepted by her childhood sweetheart, no matter what she did. C helped that blonde girl break the chains by giving her his hand, so she imprinted on him instead. Someone like C, who would never be able to hide his emotions, is a much better target for someone as insecure as Rachel. The class rep is a little odd but still understandable. Laura was raped in the past by the school bullies and was saved by Han. Before that, I think she had a simple life with her family. But she had sex with Han regardless. In the end, that led to Rachel killing her out of jealousy. Even though the current Laura has not had any trauma, she must have been brought into the memory world and was shown the event with her own eyes. If I were in her shoes, I would also have been devastated by circumstances beyond my control. By being a couple with C, that fate is no longer imminent. Although I wonder if the class rep and that childhood friend will fight again since they are now both in love with C. However, compared to my situation, those two have one more thing in common. They can disregard their pain as fake. Everything they have had to take until now can all go bye-bye without care. With C on their side, that is enough. They have achieved their happiness already. No more events to worry about, no more Han. The two girls can simply enjoy their youth with C until the end. I do not have the same luxury since my misery was painted on me with my own flesh and blood. All the pain and the sorrow haunt me so much that I would not want to be in this world. Living here every day is worse than hell. On top of that, these ugly scars on my body never forget to tell me how inferior I am compared to Rachel and Laura. Unless mother no longer exists, there is no way for me to say nothing ever happened in actuality just because of the script. But they can. More than anything, I envy them. Their unblemished skins, unburdened freedom, unshackled fates, everything about them just seems so much better than what I have currently. They can laugh, they can cry, they can be beautiful. They can be their true selves. At the least, they do not have to hide their faces. C could just look at it and compliments them, albeit in his heart only. I have not heard a good thing coming from C's thoughts regarding my appearance. Yet perhaps, that is for the best. It is better for me to not hear anything than to listen to his description of my scars. Although, at this rate, I think he will not do that. C is a considerate person, after all. In the past, C considered his love a sin. Then what about my envy currently? Is it a crime? Something worse, even. Water is coming from my eyes down to my cheeks, but I pay them no attention. It is not abnormal for me to do such a thing. The more I think, the heavier my heart becomes. 
I do not know what I should do anymore. Without a doubt, I will not let my life be controlled and ridiculed by an invisible system. But what is waiting for me ahead? What event is glancing around the corner, waiting to give Han the chance to swoop in and become the hero to conquer my worn out heart? Is he going to save me? Or is he going to let Han do it? I want you to do it. My mind thinks of only one person. Funny guy, he is. Without a face, he somehow still feels charming. I have read many books, but in those stories, the prince is supposed to be someone who looks good. Not only that, Prince Charming should talk like a gentleman. My prince does not even have eyes to see. He talks crudely and makes jokes about silly things. He does not come from royalty. Not at all. In fact, he does not have a place of his own. I have not been there, but in his words, it is made of lines and scribbles. Most importantly, he makes me laugh. What more can I ask for? Where did you go last night? Sadly, there is one thing even grander than the event about to happen to me. She will be here whether I like it or not. After breaking out of the event, she will still control every aspect of my life. Mother. Chapter 57, Arc 1 Illustration, it is chapter dedicated to illustration related to novel. You can check it out on author website. Link in description. Chapter 58, So when will we arrive at school? This morning, all of the shadow figures are more detailed. By saying that, I do not mean they are just more this and more that. No, no, no. Rather than just being a blob of darkness that vaguely resembles a human shape, these things now have arms and legs. Incredible, I know. I am still astounded by the changes. Still, unlike any of the characters, these shadows do not swing their arms while walking. Instead, they are just like cut out pieces of cardboard that can move. I would say they look very close to shooting targets that can move. Or better yet, lagging characters. It looks creepy and hilarious all at once, maybe leaning a little toward the horrific side for those unfamiliar with them, though. On top of that, I believe the number of shadow figures is now more than before. Especially out on the streets, there are definitely more shadow figures walking around today. Anyway, I do not know if they will be developed into full-fledged humans or characters at this rate. That seems unlikely, to be honest. The system does not have enough power to generate such a situation. It does not even have enough RAM for me to keep my memories when walking far away from Han. If so, how is it able to generate new sidekicks? Unless, of course, the game is getting more attention, and the author is getting donations from God knows where. But I highly doubt that. No one would give up their money to purchase this abomination of a game. Because of everything, I have been keeping my, face, out for any new changes in this world. It makes perfect sense, no. This Iraj game is rapidly changing at an alarming rate. And I should be making mental notes as detailed as possible since the changes may make or break what I currently have. Rather than waiting until something weird happens, I would feel more comfortable seeking them out. Being more active will give me more time to solve if a situation goes for the worst, similar to what happened to Rachel yesterday. Maybe this makes absolutely no sense at all, but something told me I would regret it until the end of time if I did not run up the stairs to meet Rachel. Weird, so weird. Anyway, right now, the last thing I want to do is to ruin this run. It may not be a canon iteration, but it is the only one that has given me hope. In addition, if the game is really being updated, there ought to be more events that I did not know of. Maybe a new heroine I have never seen may show up. Who knows for sure. Therefore, I need to be extra vigilant. Oi. Han. Classmates A and B are waiting for the main character at the school gate, just like in the past. Back then, they were supposed to be here to comment on Rachel and Han finally being a real couple. Knowing how much of a psycho Rachel is, A and B probably had an idea of what was to come. However, things are not what they believe. The one Rachel is clinging to has been switched from Han to me. I wonder what they are going to say. Hey A. Hey B. The protagonist waves at the two guys. How was last night? Did you really cook for Rachel? Classmate A enthusiastically asks. He then walks closer to Han and whispers. Care to tell a brother what you did after that? After hearing such a thing, the corners of Rachel's eyes twitch while Laura amusingly smiles. Even the grip of Blondie on my arm is slightly stronger than before. No matter the times I have seen this scene, I still do not know where he found such courage. 
the guy is picking a fight with Rachel as if he got excellent insurance. Well, I sure hope that insurance of his covers acts of stupidity. Ben. Immediately after A's questions, B smacks him on the head. Ack. Hey. What did I do? The guy screams. But instead of answering the question, B returns it back. What did you do? Scratching his head, A says, I'm just curious. Sorry Rachel, sorry Han. This guy knows nothing of what he is trying to say. Student B bows in front of Blondie and turns back at Student A apologize to them for being rude. As the atmosphere slowly goes down around him, A's face turns pale like paper. Han shakes his head. Don't worry, it's fine with me. You just need to say it to Rachel. R.A. Rachel. Classmate A stutters. Rachel looks at him closely and sighs. It's fine. Phew. I thought I was about to. Classmate A breathes out in relief. Ben. Ah. That hurts. Fuck. Stop hitting me. A turns toward B while placing a hand on his head. His voice sounds a bit annoyed. B raises his arm once more, threatening his friend. Dumbass. Rachel's not finished. Oh. A thousand apologies. Right around the corner, Han looks away. He seems unable to stand looking at the scene. Well, his friend is making a fool of themselves, so that much is. PFT. Wait, is he laughing? A and B are looking at him now. I can sense a murderous intent coming out from them. Seriously, pal, try to hide your snickers better next time. They will probably not cut your ass, but you will not have a good time around them like this. Ahem. Rachel clears her throat. Right after, everyone turns to look at her. As you can see, nothing is going on between Han and me. We are just childhood friends. Really? A asks. There is disbelief in his voice. But you have been with each other for so long. And on his side, B also joins in. Pardon my rudeness, Rachel. But I would like to ask the same thing. Blondie looks at me with her aquamarine eyes. That's the truth. Han and I are friends. No more, no less. I hold no special feelings for him, and Han holds no special feelings for me. Currently, I have someone else on my mind. How she talks makes me feel like she is trying to explain that to me. I mean, I understand her target has been switched by how she acts. But hearing her saying that kind of makes me feel reassured somehow. It feels warm, like how the class rep paid attention to me. Right now, my heart belongs to C. I am going out with him with the intention of marriage. And as if things are not chaotic enough, Rachel drops another nuclear bomb. What? A combination of four what's pierces the sky into the stratosphere. That loud scream is created by four people. Those are Laura, A, B, and C. Lady, I am glad you think of me like that, but when did we start going out together? I am doing that with the class rep already. Plus, you know perfectly clear that fact. Are you trying to get me killed? I can feel Laura's body heat increasing on the other side. Do you see the intense glare coming out from those amber eyes? Take it back quick, or we will see a bloodbath. Laura, I swear I do not know a thing. Not wasting a single second, I try my best to salvage my life. Laura nods at my explanation and directs her eyes at Rachel with haste. I can still feel the chill on my spine, although I am not the target. Don't worry, see. I understand. It's just this woman who is being obnoxious. That was ridiculously easy. Hot damn. I thought I had to start begging or something. Han did that in the past but was still ground into meat patties. How come they are so understanding? Where did they get such trust in me? Because Han certainly did not have that. I thought Rachel clinging on to C was because of his weakness or something. After all, even the class rep was hugging him like that. A slaps his forehead. B stares at us in awe. I had the same thoughts. Even though it was odd, I thought C didn't have breakfast, so he fainted on the road. The girls had to carry him. Trying to hold back his laughter, Han walks forward to his friends. Come on, guys. Time to head to class. Still unable to believe the circumstances in front of him, A mumbles to himself. So the childhood friend doesn't win at all. I I guess not. B sounds unsure. But it was so obvious. I know. After a few seconds. 
Hey Han. A calls out to the protagonist. Hmm. Remember my sister. Chapter 59, Kurikawa arrives. Your sister? I do remember her. Why are you asking? If I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since the last time I saw her. A little further ahead, Han Sam does not seem to understand why A brought his sister up, as there is a clear look of confusion on his handsome face, but I do. The reason for A to speak up like that is simple. First and foremost, he loves his sister a lot. And by that, I mean he loves her in a normal way, you perverts. Jeez. Even though I can not see or hear you, I know some of you just expected something disgusting just now. Yuck. Then again, those that can hear these words or are currently reading them are probably too twisted for anything normal. I blame the author for creating this wretched, perverted world that attracts all of you. Anyway, the past iterations showed the sister's obsession with Han already. That was her setting. In the past, Rachel was the clingy and stabby Yandera, Kurikawa was the closet pervert Yandera, and A's sister was the worshipping Yandera. As for the class representative, since she did not survive that long, she was not given such a setting. Still, if Laura were a Yandera, the class rep would steer toward Rachel's spectrum more. After all, she was always serious about everything. Classmate A's sister worshipped her love like he was some god. She had a shrine for Han hidden away inside her room and would pray to it every day. If I remember correctly, some of Han's personal belongings, plus a picture of his face, were placed on silver-plated dishes. Those items included a flock of hair, a toothbrush, and a torn piece of his underwear. She salvaged those items by rummaging through his garbage when Rachel was not paying attention. And the final reason, also the one I do not have any concrete evidence of, is the blonde-haired girl on my left. Classmate A fears Rachel deeply. That is clear as night and day. He understands what she is capable of and will limit his sister to protect her life. In the past, he was murdered by his own sister because of fear for her life. And soon after, she would then be killed by Rachel for real. I told you this before, right? She stripped A's sister, opened her abdomen, and used her intestines as a rope to hang her dead body on the Sakura branch. However, now that she has stated that we were somehow together, there would finally be a chance for his sibling to achieve happiness. Well, she has been thinking and talking about you a lot, so I wonder if you could spend some time with her. Please. A explains while taking a glance at Rachel. His voice sounds a little tired. I bet he is still doubtful of Rachel's sudden change. Ah, okay. I do miss that cute lady. We can catch up and hang out with your sister together. Han agrees to classmate A's proposal without thinking about it as usual. Well, best of luck to you, my man. You are indeed there for a treat. The only problem I have with this proposal is A's place is not very close by, and I cannot let my memories be erased by walking too far away from Han. On the other hand, since Rachel is already interested in me, there is no need to fear for A's sister's life anymore. I would rather not be there, to be honest. Rachel, Laura, and Kurikawa are already too much for me to handle. If A's sister is somehow changed like the others, history will repeat itself, but with me instead of the main character. There is a gaming arcade nearby A's house, though. Perhaps I should go there to wait while they are having fun? A date with the girls does not sound bad, though. Thanks, Han. Classmate A pats Han on the back. No worries. Let's pick up the pace. I don't want to be late for class. Wait up. B speeds up. Are you really not, you know, together with Rachel? A nods. I still want to confirm it one last time. You have no idea how hard it is to believe in such a thing. Man, you two need to trust me on this, okay? Rachel likes C don't you see how she attaches herself to him? Han points his fingers at me. Then, what about the class rep on his right? How do you explain that? Classmate B then says the most important fact. Well, you see, um. How should I put this? They are both with C. Even Han does not seem to believe his own words. Eh. Eh. Yeah, that is the normal reaction. Even though I myself do not believe it, you guys must realize. It is indeed true. Huh. Are you trying to say that Rachel and C are dating? While Laura and C are dating. Classmate A can hardly contain his shocked voice anymore. Wait, that's illegal, isn't it? B is also sharing the same kind of tone in his voice. 
Han sighs heavily. Yet his eyes filled with admiration betray his true feelings. Impossible, yes. That's why he is my master. A and B both turn their faces at me. After a few seconds of thinking, they both shouted, Master. Please teach us your ways. Oh, for fuck's sake. Not these guys, too. I am not opening a kindergarten, you know. Ah. My right arm feels a bit tighter. When I turn to that side, Laura already has her eyes on me. What's the matter? I just want to hug you tighter, that's all. She smiles softly. Ah. Such a sweet girl. We still need to discuss Rachel, see. Ah, crap. The class rep then turns to the blonde-haired girl on my other side. I still do not recognize you as C's girlfriend. Laura, 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 you poor, naive girl. Rachel shakes her head slowly. Who says I need your permission? Uh oh. Catfight. Classmate A pumps his fists into the air. As he turns slowly to look at his friends, hoping for some cheering, Han and B look at him funnily. What? No one says anything to him because they know what is coming next. The atmosphere drops down instantly as two girls are now directing their chilling stares at him. It is already hard if there is one, but there are two. Eek. -e I'm sorry. He quickly covers his face with his hands. I can see him shaking his legs. Rachel then puts on an innocent smile. You should stay quiet for a while. Laura does not. Be mindful of what you speak. Yes, ma'ams. A stands straight up. He even salutes her like a superior officer. He never learns to keep his mouth shut, doesn't he? B tries his best to hold back waves of laughter. Han nods vigorously. I completely agree. But then Laura interrupts them. Leave. Now. Eek. Without waiting for a second sentence, all three guys cowardly run away. Just like that, the scene is cleared. Such power, much authority, very well. Luckily, I do not have to catch up with them to keep my memories from getting erased. The school is already right up ahead. Still, to make sure, I also walk faster. Now that there is no redundancy, back to our topic. Laura clears her voice. What did I tell you? Nothing to talk about. Rachel nonchalantly responds. What do you mean there's nothing to talk about? While they try to argue, I, as the goodest BOI, decide to stay completely silent. Laura hugs my arm tighter. C is my boyfriend. You are not in a relationship with him. Hearing that, the blonde-haired girl brings her arm up. Although it is still intertwining mine, she can raise the index finger and moves it from side to side. You are only half right. C is your boyfriend. That is undoubtedly the truth. That's not half truth. Do not twist my words to your own liking. The facial expression on Laura's face is getting more annoyed than ever. Sharing is caring. Don't you agree, see? Rachel looks at me with beautiful blue eyes, hoping for a positive reply. Being enveloped by two gorgeous women is a dream for men out there. However, I am not Han. I know that greed and lust will only lead to sadness and pain. Personally, I do think like Laura. That is my reply. Laura is my lawful girlfriend. This might hurt you, but I apologize. We are not in a relationship, Rachel. I have no idea what I should call my relationship with Rachel. Letting her know is the best thing I can give her right now. See. Laura has a smug look. Contrary to my imagination, rather than being sad or depressed, Rachel laughs it off like nothing. We are. You don't know it yet. It's not how it works. How does she keep on doing this? You clearly do not understand how a relationship works. Laura sternly says. It's sacred. It's holy. Do not use your vile thinking to defile such a thing. Damn, the class rep is mad. Smiling innocently, Rachel ignores Laura. Oh, hey. Look over there, Kurikawa. She's waiting for us. A short distance away from us, Kurikawa is standing all on her own. Seeing us coming closer, she waves her hand to say hi. Sadly, I cannot wave back as my hands are literally busy. Making our way toward her, I notice something is not quite right. Did she have bandages on her face like that before she left Han's mansion? Chapter 60, Different Attitudes Hey, morning, Kurikawa. I call out to the bookworm. 
although I want to wave back, with my arms totally occupied, I cannot. Honestly, I would tell Rachel and Laura to let me go for a second if I could, yet my coward instinct is telling me not to do so. I have a very unusual feeling which keeps warning me that letting them go is a terrible idea. I have had my ass saved by my sixth sense many times prior in the past. Therefore, I have no qualms about trusting it once more. Being extra careful always helps, even when Rachel is no longer stabby stabby. In addition to my trusted sixth sense, I have learned not to believe in anything this world throws at me any longer. Who on earth would have thought the housewife would be on one arm of mine and the class rep would be on the other one? You. Lies. Also. Yes, Rachel may be warm and cuddly right now. She is cute and fluffy, but who can be sure she will not turn into a berserker state out of nowhere? Not me. It has been only two days, for goodness sake. To keep myself and others from harm, I must not let her new side get too far inside my head. Sorry, I can't return the gesture. My head leans to the left and the right, signaling my difficult situation to Kurikawa. Rachel suddenly pushes my arm inside her chest, even more, making it impossible to draw out. With a faint smile, the bookworm says, No worries, see I understand your hardship. Such a thoughtful girl. Hey, Kurikawa. Blondie shouts merrily from my side. How are you doing? That is a little sudden, I am not going to lie. Rachel makes me feel like they are on good terms with each other, yet I can be sure she was not like this yesterday. In fact, Rachel was never fond of anyone sharing the same sex as hers. She always considered them to be a threat to her love. That explains why she tried to kill them all in the previous iterations. The housewife was very territorial in a way. Fortunately for me, or perhaps even for us, she does not seem to have that dark killer vibe to her aura right now. On the contrary, Blondie is actually sending out a friendly atmosphere towards the bookworm without a doubt. After the weird event last night, she seems like a different person. Some may consider her change of personality a bit too abrupt. However, to me, this brings the housewife more good than bad. Rachel never had a female friend due to her, previous tendencies. Having someone who can understand her is indeed a preferable outcome. I would love to see Rachel start going out with her close friends, doing whatever she likes, and being a girl her age. Images and scenarios appear inside my head. In my vision, I see a Rachel being conscious about her weight, grabbing an ice cream or sweets, a Rachel that skips school to drink at the local coffee shop. A reality where the housewife can laugh with her peers is something that I wholeheartedly wish to see. There is another thing that I notice. How Rachel talks and acts has changed as if she has known me for so long. Still, at this point, I am more curious about how she will interact with others rather than myself. The rest can wait. A little taken aback by Rachel's attitude, the bookworm explains, so so, I guess. Is it just me, or is there a hint of sadness in Kurikawa's voice? What happened? Does it have any correlation to the new bandages on her face? Please do not be what I think it is. Good morning, Kurikawa. The grip on one of my hands tightens as the class rep coldly says her greetings. Hearing that, I glance at Laura and quickly notice her sending Kurikawa a blank stare. There is no usual shine inside her beautiful brown eyes. Instead, as if they are covered by a thin veil of darkness. Even the reflection of me standing next to her is nowhere to be seen. Quite scary, honestly. By the way, the way and the tone our class rep just said hi was probably a little too formal. Judging by her attitude, I am starting to get the feeling that something horrible happened between this girl and the bookworm. If Rachel's change is considered one to the more positive side of the spectrum, then Laura is the direct opposite. What else could be the cause of such a shift? Whispering that, my mind instantly goes back to what I saw when I was asleep in the kitchen, where Laura did something unspeakable to the rest of the group. The nightmare in which her frail body holding Rachel's kitchen knife and the blood spilled on her is still fresh as new to me. And soon after, a shiver goes down my spine alongside goosebumps. Seeing Laura killing people was unfathomable to my feeble brain. Probably just overthinking certain things. Alas, what the class rep said can only be interpreted as polite, and there is nothing wrong with a bit of formality. Good morning, class rep. The bookworm ignores Laura's chilling gaze and replies with a nod. Kurikawa, were you waiting for us? We step forward, closing the distance. Yes, I was. For how long? No matter day and age, 
we should not make people wait for us unless it is an unavoidable emergency. If the answer comes up to 20 minutes or more, I will have to apologize. Kurikawa looks back at the school's clock tower and comes up with an answer, not very long. I'd say 10 minutes. Phew. My conscience is safe. Though, 10 minutes is still not short. I am glad to see you, Kurikawa, says Blondie. I personally think she should have gotten to school sooner. There is no need to wait for us here since we will meet in class anyway. Laura has a different opinion. Seeing that the two girls have a disagreement, I stay dead silent. For one, it is clear that they will sort it out themselves. Plus, they all have their own point of view regarding this matter. Everyone has their own logic, and I should not impede on that. The bookworm and Rachel could have wanted to come to class with us as friends, while Laura could have looked for peace and quiet with me. After all, there has been almost no moment that the class rep could spend time with me as a couple. As for me, well, my thought is she should not be here since Han has already left for class. But of course, my opinion does not matter in the slightest now. It has never mattered back in the past with the plot. Now, with the storyline in the state of constantly changing, I can forget about it. I forgot, but were your wounds from last night healed already? It looks like Kurikawa's arm is still covered by bandages from whatever freaky accident. Do they still hurt? They are fine. The bookworm brushes away my concern. Sounds like they are not. From the amount of blood I saw on the floor last night, the wounds should not be taken lightly. Are you sure? I ask again, not willing to let it go. I told you, they are fine. You don't need to worry about them anymore. Kurikawa waves off my concerns. To make it even more believable, she pushes onto her arm with the other hand without flinching. See? I'm all good. No pain whatsoever. Hmm. I am not convinced. Although she presses the bandages with force, anyone could have been fooled by Kurikawa's actions except for me. I know how her pain tolerance is due to all she has been through. The bookworm is not just a masochist because of some basic third grade plot. On second thought, I wish she had that kind of fetish because of those. Sadly, her hidden personality has a root that has grown for many years without support. If she truly believes that, she does not need to tell me. Either she does not want me to bother her anymore, or she is trying to hide. No matter what the truth is, I should respect her thoughts. It is simply the right thing to do. Further questioning will only lead to a more complicated situation. If you say so. The three of us walk towards the classroom, with me being the center. I feel somewhat awkward being in the middle of the three like this. Under the spotlight has never been my place. Our Rachel. I L like you. No. I love you. Please be my girlfriend. A male voice shouts from behind all of us. Oh shit, I forgot about this event.